<laughs> to be clear, earlier when I asked you, can two oh, people no. of sure. I'll repeat the question to you. Two people try to resolve a moral quandary. Two people have a moral question, and they come to the answer in totally, they have two different answers for it. But they both say that they've received revelation through God. How do you resolve that disagreement and figure out who's right and who's wrong? This is the problem with grounding your meta ethics with divine revelation, and it's why presuppositionalism sucks. It's ultimately uh, circular at a foundation that is inaccessible to external parties. Do you understand? Yeah, we discriminate all the time against all sorts of people for a variety of reasons, yeah. For instance, when I go to McDonald's, I'm discriminated against trying to go into the play place. They won't let me in because I'm too old. But not black people. And God was not a homosexual or a coomer. Destiny, you're a stupid fa- Therefore- Whoa. Tonight we're bringing you a special event between Destiny and Tristan Haggard. They're gonna be debating the Great Reset. It's a debate we've all been kind of looking forward to. I'm gonna bring each one out individually. There's going to be between seven and 10 minute opening statement from Tristan Haggard. He's been um, wanting to make sure that he can get his position across. I'm gonna start with Tristan. How you doing tonight, Tristan? What's up, guys? Is it, is, so should I just refer to you as Tristan PhD 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 PhD? Is it? <laughs> well, there's that's there's seven PhDs, but I mean you can for whatever. I mean I'm, I'm I haven't really decided my uh, my pronouns today. I mean my <laughs> pronouns might not even be YouTube friendly, so I'll, I'm not going to make you call me by my actual pronouns. Okay, um, you can just call me Tristan. That's fine. And, and of course we have Destiny. How you doing tonight, Destiny? It's good hey, to see you I'm again. doing great. I'm excited for tonight. Yeah, yeah, me too. Uh, hello, Destiny's Chat. You might remember me, BPF. We've gone a couple of rounds ourselves. Uh, we're going to let Tristan uh, go ahead and open. Uh, Tristan, if you want to do that, the floor is yours. Cool. Uh, just to clarify, is there going to be like a specific format for the debate? Uh, we can have like timed responses. Well, yeah, anything like that? Guys, it, we'll essentially open the floor up after you, you get through your opening. Destiny will have his own opening, and we'll open the floor up for some back and forth for a little while. We may guide the conversation at some points. If it starts to get a little too loose, uh, we'll kind of tighten it up. But we'd uh, we'd like to see a good back and forth if we could. Cool, for sure. Yeah. So there's not going to be like a like a formal debate where you have no. an opening statement and then just like the opening. Yeah, just, the just the opening and then and then a back and forth. Tristan's like me. He was expecting something very much more professional. He didn't know he was going to <laughs> jump in the arena today. I mean, it's fine. It's like, I'm look, I'm being paid by the minute. At least that's what my people tell me. So, um, you know, I mean, I'll drag this on as long as possible and uh, we'll milk this cow. All right. No, I'm joking. Um, no cool. Shall I begin? Yeah, begin. Yes, sir. All right. So the proposed topic today is the Great Reset. Now... As I understand, my opponent's position, his stated position, is that there is no global Great Reset, and reorganizing after a crisis is a good thing. My position is clearly that there is a Great Reset. This is easily documented and uh, very easily demonstrated, <clears throat> and the Great Reset is a PR term for a complete overhaul of our social, economic, political, and even biological realities. Uh, the 50th annual meeting of the World Economic Forum in June 2020, hosted and convened by Prince Charles of the British royal family, was named the Great Reset. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, the World Economic Forum is an international NGO started by Klaus Schwab in 1971. They promote the idea of public-private partnerships, uh, partnerships rather, language that was actually developed by the Rockefeller Foundation to normalize the fusion of corporations and industry with government with the stated goal of, quote, engaging business, political, academic, and other leaders to shape global, regional, and industry agendas. So this is the, uh, the World Economic Forum's uh, about page right here where you can get the information about who the World Economic Forum is, what their mission is, and what they do. So um, <clears throat> Klaus Schwab's book, uh, COVID-19, The Great Reset, was published in 2020. Klaus Schwab, the, uh, uh, the leader of the World Economic Forum, the guy who started the World Economic Forum, says that the virus gives us a, quote, great opportunity and the world must act jointly and swiftly to revamp all aspects of our societies and economies from education to social contracts and working conditions. 
Uh, the Great Reset is an open agenda of revolutionary, utopian, technocratic internationalism proposed by transnational stakeholders of global mega corporations, international banking, NGOs, big foundations, and billionaire philanthropists. Vague, loaded PR terms are used by mass media to market this emergent technocratic overhaul that is utopian and revolutionary in its nature. Uh, those PR terms include the new normal. These are all terms that are used by these people. These aren't terms that I'm just making up. The fourth industrial revolution, another term. The green recovery, the green economy, based on stakeholder capitalism, or a, quote, circular economy, and the sharing economy within a smart society of smart cities will be the new normal, right? So um, <clears throat> the World Economic Forum, on their website, uh, publishes much of this stuff. There are thousands of articles on the website from the World Economic Forum. They represent essentially a global conglomerate <clears throat> of corporations that promote this idea of public-private partnerships. Um, Prince Charles actually framed this uh, global great reset as a wartime, quote, military-style campaign and martial-like plan, end quote. Uh, for the transformation of all aspects of our lives, steam rolled in under the excuse, uh, the excuse of the COVID-19 crisis into a permanent wartime global response to the climate crisis. All right, so the <clears throat> use of COVID-19 to usher this in and then the pivot to using all these same measures to fight the climate crisis is essentially what the openly stated goal of the Great Reset is according to the World Economic Forum. Uh, so the complete overhaul of the social, economic, political, and biological realms being enacted openly and internationally as a response to the COVID-19 pandemic and so-called climate crisis by the WEF, who entered a, quote, strategic partnership with the UN in 2019, right? So they entered a strategic partnership with the UN. This is all open public knowledge. This is a global partnership moving towards global governance. All right, the IMF, the World Bank, politicians, transnational corporations, and even religious leaders, including the Pope, have publicly advocated for the sweeping global reform agenda of utopian technocratic management of people and resources. So the Pope, in a 43,000 word long encyclical published in September 2020, uh, Pope Francis, this is a quote from the World Economic Forum, put his stamp on efforts to shape what's been termed a great reset of the global economy in response to the devastation of COVID-19. So this is not just a social movement. It's not just a political movement. It's, you know, it's actually even a religious movement. Uh, so this global revolution, what, Cal what Klaus Schwab calls the fourth industrial revolution, he wrote a book, it was published in 2016, got it right here, the fourth industrial revolution, this fourth industrial revolution is not just social, it's not just economic, it's not just political, but it's also biological in nature. Okay, it's a total revolution. Just like Huxley's final revolution, Aldous Huxley, who wrote extensively about such a revolution. Uh, <clears throat> and this is why the third section of Klaus Schwab's book, COVID-19, The Great Reset, which I'm going to copy up right here, Klaus Schwab's book entitled COVID-19, The Great Reset. <clears throat> The third section of this, um, excuse me, the third section of this book says that this revolutionary overhaul, overhaul will be a quote, redefining of our humanness, end quote. Klaus's 2016 book, The Fourth Industrial Revolution, expanded on this concept and how this reset is ultimately a transhumanist transformation of man. Klaus said, quote, revolution will lead, uh, this revolution will lead to a fusion of our physical, digital, and biological identity. Okay, this is a religious movement. It's not just a uh, movement of the economy. It's not just a change in the way we <clears throat> we see the response to uh, pandemics. This is essentially a revolutionary movement seeking to redefine humanity, as Klaus Schwab says. Um, so it's a religious movement, and it's based on faith and scientism. Right? It's a faith that has a creation myth, Darwinism. The faith with a priesthood, an exalted uh, expert of technocracy. It's a, pre, it's a uh, faith with an eschatology about the perfected tech, uh, secular technocratic order emerging from the great transformative crisis opportunity that is COVID-19 and the climate crisis. Uh, it's a new covenant, a new social contract 
that seeks to redefine humanity and bring about a new smart transhuman. So I've got a clip here uh, from Klaus Schwab. Just going to real quickly play a quick snippet here. I think you'll be able to hear this. It'll go through my microphone. The fourth industrial revolution will impact our lives completely. It will not only change how we communicate, how we produce, how we consume, it will change actually us, our own identity. And of course, gives life uh, to such uh, policies and uh, developments like uh, smart traffic, smart government, smart cities. What do you will... So, again, this revolution, the Great Reset, the Fourth Industrial Revolution that Klaus Schwab and company say that needs to be ushered in in response to this is about the redefining of humanity, smart humans, smart cities, smart grid. This revolution is a push for a new redefined transformed man as proposed and explored in Stanford Research Institute's 1974 research project and book entitled The Changing Images of Man, which begins with a quote from Uthant, a Burmese diplomat and the third secretary general of the United Nations, giving a Malthusian call for global government in response to several crises. The quote is this, I do not wish to seem overdramatic. But I could only conclude from the information that is available to me as Secretary General that the members of the United Nations have perhaps 10 years left in which to subordinate their ancient quarrels and launch a global partnership to curb the arms race, to improve the human environment and diffuse the population explosion and to supply the required momentum to development efforts. If such a global partnership is not forged within the next decade, then I very much fear that the problems I have mentioned will have reached such staggering proportions that they will be beyond our capacity to control. The changing images of man calls for a new global mythos to unite humanity and transform culture and man himself. The new man of the Great Reset is sold to us as a Superman, a Nietzschean Ubermensch who evolved beyond good and evil, transcending and evolving past his mythological less evolved monkey and mouse ancestors to build a revolutionary technocratic utopia where a digitally interconnected techno-biological fusion of humanity forms an internet of bodies. All right, that's a term from then, the internet of bodies. This type of superorganism in a platonic republic was theorized by 18th century utopian revolutionary Henry Saint Simon, who said, Humanity should be ruled by a priesthood of industrial chiefs, much like Plato's philosopher Kings, with men of science as the new priesthood, directing the spiritual vision of man who's no longer made in the image and likeness of God, but remade in the image and likeness of a machine. Bertrand Russell, heralded by many as a great philosopher and logician, articulated the worldview that justifies and drives this revolutionary fervor of scientism that the Great Reset is a result of. Russell assumes, like the technocrats of the Great Reset, that the problems of society stem from overpopulation. The climate crisis of the present day elite is of course a rebranding of the Malthusian overpopulation mythos that Russell put his faith in. Man is viewed as an environmental toxin whose existence is detrimental to a deified nature, right? Nature becomes deified. The prescription to fix the problem of man was just like today, world government and the scientific management of man at every level. In his 1952 book, The Impact of Science on Society, Russell wrote that, <clears throat> a, uh, that we should see the crisis of man requiring a total overhaul, a great reset of the global order. He said, and this is a quote from Bertrand Russell from The Impact of Science on Society, a clear choice must be made within 50 years. The choice between, the, the choice between excuse me, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. I, I, I had to uh, cut in a little bit, just to let you know you're at the one minute mark. Yeah, I'm gonna finish my opening statement because I'm not even halfway through. So, if, uh, oh. oh, okay. <laughs> Wait, really? I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know we were doing book review today. Okay. Okay. It's yeah, not, it's I'm, I'm gonna finish my opening statement at least. Like, you, you know, I don't know what's gonna happen after this. So, I was told I could make an opening statement. No, uh, no so you, you can't. His 1952 book, The Impact of Science on Society, Russell wrote. A clear choice must be made within 50 years, the choice between reason, and he capitalizes reason, and death. He also capitalizes death. Uh, and by reason, I mean willingness to submit to law as declared by an international authority. Russell claimed that, quote, the need for a world government, if the population problem is to be solved in any humane manner, is completely evident on Darwinian principles. 
Russell's 1931 book, The Scientific Outlook, defines man as purely material. It says that distinguishing mind and matter is a mistake. And that's a quote from him. And ex he exalts the discoveries of Pavlov, along with Darwin, another one of the saints of Russell's religion of scientism, because his experiments provided a framework for subjecting the scientific law, what has hitherto been called voluntary behavior, right? So Russell believed that human voluntary behavior is just subject to scientific law. Man is just a machine to be modified, right? So the smart city grid, social carbon credits, and the contact tracing initiated as COVID-19 crisis management are pure cybernetic Pavlovian behaviorism. His scientific outlook is openly religious in scope. Science. Russell waxes poetic about a scientific worldview and says that the value of science as metaphysic belongs in another sphere. It belongs with religion and art and love, with the pursuit of a beatific vision, with the Promethean madness that leads the greatest men to strive to become gods. Right, so Bertrand Russell's worldview embodies this drive, this Promethean view, as he called it, to become gods. H.G. Wells, reared by T.H. Huxley, also known as Darwin's bulldog, the grandfather of eugenics uh, and depopulation advocate U uh, Julian Huxley, who co-founded UNESCO and the World Wildlife Fund and the famed writer Aldous Huxley. Wells wrote several nonfiction books on the desire for a global technocratic government and the desire for a proper global crisis to initiate such a system. Is 1928 manifesto, H.G. <clears throat> Wells called for a world commonwealth to, quote, be a world religion. Wells claimed that man's soul is no longer his own. It is, he discovers, a part of a greater being which lived before he was born and will survive him. So this idea of man uh, as being a, just part of this greater organism of the great brotherhood of man that needs to be scientifically controlled, also proposed by H.G. Wells and many of the other modern thinkers of this revolutionary ideology that we see manifesting today in the Great Reset. So James H. Billington, he was the 13th librarian of Congress. He taught history at both Harvard and Princeton. He wrote of the history and nature of the revolutionary spirit of the West that we're seeing now manifesting as the Great Reset and the so-called Fourth Industrial Revolution. Billington's book is a profound exploration of the faith of the revolutionaries, this Promethean journey of a will to power as H.G. Uh, Wells and uh, Bertrand Russell just spoke about. Billington's 1980 book uh, is called Fire in the Minds of Men. Highly recommend that anybody interested in the history of revolutionary thought read that book. It is a very academic approach. Um, as James H. Billington was the 13th librarian of Congress. He was a history professor at Harvard and Princeton. So in this book, he says that this uh, faith is, uh, this faith of the revolutionaries is a religion. Now here's a quote from his book from the introduction to Fire in the Minds of Men. The origin of a faith, perhaps the faith of our time, is what he's talking about here. Modern revolutionaries are believers no less committed and intense than were the Christians or Muslims of an earlier era. What is new is the belief that a perfect secular order will emerge from the forcible overthrow of traditional authority. This inherently implausible idea gave dynamism to Europe in the 19th century and has become the most successful ideological export of the West to the world in the 20th century. All right, so there are hundreds, maybe even thousands of hours of publicly available discussions, presentations, and even advertisement for the International Great Reset, as they've called it, and so-called Fourth Industrial Revolution. Uh, these are world leaders openly advocating for this. It's not hidden. It's not a secret conspiracy. It's an open agenda. There are thousands of articles from the very people implementing this to overhaul our lives. They want to uh, <clears throat> essentially bring in a new economic, social order, and this is not just an economic and social and political revolution. It's also biological and calls for a new social contract. That's what Klaus Schwab is a direct quote from uh, Klaus Schwab. We need a new social contract. It's a new covenant. Okay, so it's being brought in under the excuse of the coronavirus pandemic. It's essentially a uh, what Prince Charles called quote military style campaign and a martial like plan end quote, uh, to restructure our social, economic, political, and biological lives in response to a crisis that is framed to the masses in a way that makes it perpetual and even unwinnable. The war against an invisible, ill-defined, and constantly transforming enemy uh, like global health and climate change is what's ushering in this great reset. There's no end point. There's no victory proposed. Just the constant need for more control over and more transformation of man. The Great Reset is to be implemented through private-public partnerships, a PR term for basically global corporate governance. 
This technocratic reset includes, but isn't limited to, a rapid wartime mobilization towards a global government, a centrally planned global economy, and a new social contract. Okay, so I'll go ahead and just uh, summarize this last section here. Almost done, don't worry. Uh, the centrally planned global economy that Klaus Schwab calls for uh, a new economic system of stakeholder capitalism. Okay, this is a new economic system sold to us using terms like zero growth, net zero, the circular economy, the sharing economy, <clears throat> and it's a global economy built around digital identity and social credits, carbon credits. It's being proposed and it's being marketed to save the planet and to save us and to bring about equality and all these things that sound good when you actually look at what these people are looking to implement. We have no say in this. We have no <clears throat> real rights under the system. And this is being endorsed by global leaders, including the Pope, uh, the cloak, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the Pope, Pope Francis endorses this economic overhaul in the Great Reset by blessing the Council for Inclusive Capitalism, an initiative founded by Lady Lynn Forrester, the Rothschild. This council includes Bank of America, BP, Johnson & Johnson, Salesforce, Visa, and tons of other partners, including the Rockefeller Foundation, the Ford Foundation, um, and the UN Special Envoy for Climate Finance. Okay, global government, global governance, includes a standardized international digital ID as proposed by the ID2020 organization, which Klaus Schwab uh, saw as a cornerstone of his fourth industrial revolution that would bring a, quote, fusion of our physical, digital, and biological identity. So your DNA will be your data. The Internet of Things, Internet of Bodies, Smart City Grid are all built upon this concept of global digital ID. Okay, the centrally planned economy, uh, global digital ID, this is all a redesigned social construct, I'm sorry, social contract, the new redesigned social contract that the World Economic Forum called for long before the COVID crisis catalyzing event. It's designed to function within a framework of the fourth industrial revolution of digital identity and global citizenship in a new economy. Humanity is just expected to embrace this uh, complete totalitarian reset of every aspect of our lives and what Klaus Schwab calls a redefinition of our humanness, a redefining of our fundamental beliefs of who we are, how we should live, and the meaning of our lives. This new normal is revolutionary, technocratic, and utopian in vision. It's actually a global biosecurity surveillance state that defines humanity and humans as environmental toxins, as bipedal bioweapons to be treated like cattle that can and should be tracked, traced, and controlled via digital behaviorism through the Internet of Things and the Internet of Bodies. It's a new normal of behavior modification through global corporate governance and digitized Pavlovian training. Right? You're, you're basically Pavlov's dogs. It's a new normal of biological <clears throat> and brain modification even through big pharma and big tech. Klaus Schwab told Time Magazine that, quote, the fourth industrial revolution is that it's, <clears throat> uh, it's not a revolution. It's a system, I'm sorry, it's not a product revolution. It's a system revolution. It's a revolution of all the systems that we live in, right? The product of that new system is a new man, actually a transhuman. The Great Reset is openly touted as a social, economic, political, biological, and even a religious revolution. This Great Reset is not only undesirable, it's inherently dehumanizing. This revolutionary faith assumes man is an automaton, a beast to be controlled. It transforms man, who from the Orthodox Christian perspective, made in the image and likeness of God, transforms him into an animal that's inherently bad for a deified and mythologized nature, an animal that must be controlled, tracked, traced, and reduced in number for the greater good, a materialist good defined by a self-proclaimed elite, the stakeholders who will eat the steaks while the masses eat bugs and GMO soy kibble rations based on false premises of a dehumanizing religion of revolution, a faith in materialism and humanism that exalts man as the measure of all things who can, through his will to power, create a perfected global society. St. Eustine Popovich, his critique on European humanism, described this evolutionary so-called Superman and said, quote, in all respects, this is a man without God and without a soul. In other words, a godless and soulless man, a robot. A robot is a robot by its non-recognition of either God or the soul. After killing God and the soul within himself, the European man has been gradually committing suicide over the last several decades, for suicide inescapably accompanies deicide. 
The Great Reset is undeniably real. It's an open agenda publicly declared that intends to restructure all of human culture, human behavior, and human biology. We should reject this revolution and the fundamental assumptions that it's built on. There we go. Sorry, went, went a few seconds over there. Yeah. Okay. Well, Destiny, I'm going to give you I'm going to give you equal time to respond to that. Uh, yeah, and just so he knows, you have like 25 minutes, sir. Right. So, so, and Destiny, take your time. Yeah. I just honest to God, I just want to get to the back and forth. Um, but I guess gotcha. if I got a lot of time to talk, I'll just to, to, to lay this out. So typically when people lay out what would be referred to as a conspiracy theory, what we typically do is we lay out like a collection of vague or imprecise statements or a collection of facts that are indeed true. But then what we do is we do a lot of work behind the scenes to kind of weave this web that brings it all together into some sort of like malicious, horrible thing. Um, similar to like a teenager that might think that his parents are, you know, plotting against him to destroy his life. You know, why do my parents tell me that I can't go out late? It's because they don't want me to have a social life. Why did my parents take my computer games or my Switch from me? Because they don't want me to hang out with my friends online. They want me to be a loser. Why do my parents, um, you know, like make me uh, do all these stupid things at school? Like I just want to go out and do like these more fun things. You, you, you take this collection of facts and then based upon your kind of like preconceived notions of how the world works, you're able to spin a story of these aren't a group of people that are concerned with your well-being. These are a group of people that want to destroy your entire life. So typically the way that I, I tend to approach the breakdown of these types of ideas is I, I, we have to go through the particular examples of what it is you're saying is being done during the Great Reset to see if we can find some of these more nefarious or treacherous ideas or things or policies or proposals at least, or ideas at least, and then see are these actually as bad as we say they are. I notice that there's a lot of buzzwords being used in here. We've got stakeholder capitalism. The concept of stakeholder capitalism, to my understanding, is not really that bad. The idea is that all of us have a stake in the well-being of our big corporations and our countries that these corporations inhabit. Therefore, those corporations ought to be beholden to the people that power them, namely the citizens of the countries that have these corporations. Um, I don't think that those things are necessarily you literally just read a book for like 25 minutes okay you can do this for like two minutes okay don't <laughs> worry okay um i don't think that these concepts are necessarily bad um i think that uh using buzzwords like this to try to say that like oh my god like there's some eugenics program or you know darwinian evolution of capitalist blah 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 um it's all boring at the end of the day I, i'm kind of looking for as we go through this because i didn't hear a single proposal that was actually bad um i just heard what amounted to basically uh, like a four-star amazon review of a book so yeah, if we want to get into it, I'm, I'm really curious, like what is, um, we, we visited these three words a lot, a socioeconomic, a political, and a biological change or reorganization of people uh, going forward into the future. I'm curious, like what is an example of like a policy that is being uh, proposed by uh, the great reset proponents or something that we think is a bad idea or is gonna harm society going forward? Is that supposed to be a question? Yeah, I can write it out with a question mark if you need. Oh, cool. Yeah, well, you, uh, let me, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, I mean, you made a lot of false equivalent statements there. Uh, characterizing what I just laid out as some sort, some sort of conspiracy theory, uh, that's, that's a straw man. Uh, that's, you're, you're tearing down a straw man of a conspiracy theory, which I'm not proposing. What I'm saying is that the global great reset is an open agenda that anybody can read about. You can read Klaus Schwab's book, COVID-19, The Great Reset which actually proposes that we redefine our very humanity. So you think it's a good idea to redefine our humanity? Oh, you're not even here. Is it, my, my argument's not even worth listening to. You just walk away. Uh, it's just, so, give me a second. Destiny has left the room. <clears throat> oh, coming back. Give him a second. Yeah, so... Okay, I'm sorry. Hold on, wait. So my question was, I just wanted one policy, but I know you're about to ramble for like 20 minutes about, I just, I just want a policy or something. I don't need like all of this. You just did this for like 20 minutes. I, I'm just curious, like what's like, excuse what's me? an example? No, excuse me. You didn't even listen to what I just said. I listened to like half of it and I can guess away. the other half. I, like You walked away from, oh, you can guess the other half. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. So Destiny, you think that all the policies promoted by the Great Reset are good ideas, yeah? Probably you not all of There's probably ideas. a great deal that I disagree with. So you think stake stakeholder capitalism is a good idea. Can you go ahead and tell me what's good about stakeholder capitalism? You when I hear people talk about stakeholder Excuse capitalism. Excuse me, let me speak, let me speak. Oh, you you just asked me a question, I'm sorry, my bad. Yeah, you, know, I, no, I didn't finish. you have to let him respond. No, no, he didn't finish, yeah, I didn't, he didn't yeah, finish. Yeah, Destiny the does get to respond. Tristan, yeah, I let, Tristan, asking you, the question. You, I haven't wait. asked the question yet. Okay. Let me ask the question. All right, so Destiny claims that stakeholder capital, capitalism is a good idea and that it's basically giving destiny a say in what major global corporations do. How do you think you're gonna have a say in what stakeholders 
are doing with these global mega corporations who are going to set policy for you and how you live. How will you have a say in that? What is a stakeholder? What do you mean when you say that? You're the one who said it's a good idea. I just asked you. I, you hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Wait. Oh my god. Hold on. Just I deal with a lot of like schizophrenic people in my community and shit. So it's like this is going to drive me crazy. I'm just asking you a question. I don't need you to give me a speech or ask me 20 questions when I ask you a question. I'm just uh, so, asking so, you simply like, what is a stakeholder? What is a stakeholder yeah. is an ill-defined concept that Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum propose for this new global economic system. Okay. Stakeholders, they say, are the planet. Hey, shut up and let me finish. They say that the stakeholders are the planet, you, the people, right, as well as these global corporations, heads of corporations, and the shareholders. So stakeholders are the planet as well as the global population. Right. How are you going to be a stakeholder in this? These are ill-defined terms. You they just said, yeah, it. so you keep saying, how am I going to be a stakeholder in this? I'm a member of the planet, right? So I am a stakeholder. You're a member of the planet. And what is the planet? Do we have, are we doing flat earth as well, this debate? I don't know so how much I set up for it. you're a member of the planet. You're, I mean, so I'm you, a human being. I live on... Okay, so, okay, let me, okay, fuck, I have to do this. What is the so, Wait, wait, hold on. You're so, let me, How are you a member of the planet? Because I'm a human Please being and I live on this planet. So l let me just talk for a second, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. We have to give him a chance. Okay, have to give him a yeah, chance it's fine. Do you, do you want to add anything more to this? Cause, so just so you know where I'm going, because I'm not trying to ambush you, you, it seems like you don't know what a stakeholder is versus like a shareholder. Now, I'm about to explain that. I'll give you one they more don't opportunity. Even explain, the World Economic Forum mm -hmm. itself does not even okay. explain what a stakeholder That's is. Great. It's, a loosely, shh, it's a loosely defined term mm -hmm. that they can redefine as they choose. Okay. Just I'll, like I'll, a green economy. What is a green economy? What is a green recovery? These are ill-defined terms that can always be shifted. Well, to help put us back on track, okay. well, answer his question yeah, no, no, and give we're, us what, in the, in the regular yeah. definition of what a stakeholder Wait, here, in yeah, the I'll, regular I'll, I'll, economy so, is. I'll, I'll explain this. So the concept is that you have shareholders and then you have stakeholders. Now, traditionally, uh, uh, traditionally, the fiduciary responsibility of a company is to the shareholders. A shareholder is somebody that owns equity in a business. Um, or maybe has loan money, but generally like a shareholder is somebody that owns a part of a business. Now, the problem though, is that businesses that are only responsible to shareholders have negative impacts sometimes on other people that are impacted by that business. So for instance, let's say that we have a business that um, handles, I'll, I'll, I'll use an example like toxic waste or something, right? Now you might be a shareholder in that company, However, it might be the case that there is a town that you dump that waste in. Well, in a way, these guys are kind of stakeholders in the company. So a stakeholder, my understanding of what a stakeholder is, is stakeholders are typically people that are impacted by the activities of a business. So like a sta the stakeholders are typically much larger than the shareholders of a company. And if a company doesn't have to be uh, concerned about the stakeholders of a company, but only the shareholders of a company, you have problems where the incentives are misaligned such that a company can do things that dramatically enriches the shareholders, but ends up fucking over a lot of the stakeholders. That's the problem. So we can talk about like internal shareholders for a company, like an employee, for instance, is gonna be a stakeholder. I think, I, I'm not, I might have to say stakeholder. An employee might be a stakeholder Stakeholder because you work at a company, um, but you don't really have shares in the company, right? And an external stakeholder um, might be uh, uh, maybe somebody that is like a customer to a, a business, or it might be like a, a town that a business like operates in. So when somebody says that we need stakeholder capitalism, my understanding is that rather than having these mega large corporations fucking over the entire planet and burning everything down and taking everything for themselves and enriching just the people that are rich enough to have a share of the company, stakeholder capitalism says, well, hold on. These companies need to act in a way that benefits all of the different groups that they impact as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and who, defines how the, who defines what's good? Who defines what's good for the planet? You're, you think you're going to have a say in that? How are you going to well, have a say in that? How am I going to have a say in that? Well, so when the government... Yeah, in, in your, in your oh, you're not going to let me answer. Said, you're just going to keep rambling? Is that, I'm, uh, I'm trying to finish my question. No, no, no. You're not I'm finishing a question. You're asking a question that you're steamrolling after to give the impression that you yeah, have like, more authority in the conversation than you do. In this global, in this Actually, global I'm just going to talk over you, okay? So, so you're asking me, how do you have any impact on a corporation? Stop. 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 There's too much chaos. You have to you have to chill out for just a second. If you ask a question, you've got to give them a chance to respond to it, man. Just give them a chance to respond to it. Finish formulating the question. Okay, finish your, formulating the question. In your stakeholder capitalism, which you say is so great, how will you have a say in what is good for the planet and what is good for society and what is good for the stakeholders, which you obviously identify with? You think you're a stakeholder. So how are you going to be putting in your two cents on how this is to be implemented, on how we de uh, determine what's good for the planet. 
Gotcha. So the way that we do this is legislatively. Oftentimes, Congress will write legislation that it will have an impact on the way that businesses operate. As a stakeholder and how these businesses operate, you have some input when you elect people to Congress or to your state or local governments for how you want these types of things negotiated. So an example of this might be um, as part of the negotiations for large multilateral trade agreements. Might be. Um, might Are you be. okay? So you're you're so you're gonna you're just gonna speculate on how you might in a hypothetical situation have a say in this. Okay, I'll tell you how you have a say in this. Then when how you, you have- yeah, so through it can be through protesting, for instance. So through all protesting. Through- okay, okay, yeah, you're gonna protest. Can you tell me what happened to the key? Can you tell me what happened to the Keystone Pipeline or the Dakota Pipeline? I didn't think so. So shut the fuck up, right? You can have impacts over what goes on in your environment. There have been massive projects that have been canceled. Can I finish a single thing? There have been massive projects that have been canceled because of either protests or because of people directly influencing their leaders, their elected leaders. And Soisberg out. I'm not Soisberging, dude. You've talked like 10 times as much as me. He's trying to answer the question. For outsiders watching, let him finish the answer. And then you guys- He's not answering the question. He's giving- I just gave you- you, Stop using yeah, debate bro terms, bro. We're not like, in a, this is a false equivalent. You've done it. You've engaged in a level four straw man. Like, dude, chill. Have a be a human being, okay? No, you don't. You don't believe in lo- you don't believe in logical fallacies. I believe in logical fallacies, but when I'm talking to another human being and I'm not trying to win a debate on Reddit, I usually just say like, "Hey, bro, you said this thing. I think it's not right." That's usually how I talk. But well, if you want, you we can employ you, like you the been, language of fucking salty. like philosophy and try to say like, oh, you've well, actually, salty. you've engaged yeah, no, in a level three would, false equivalency prefer, and the propositional logic that. doesn't necessarily follow deductively. And we would actually analyze yeah. this. Like, I would much yeah. prefer that we had perhaps timed responses. So and that that's each one fine. of us we can do too many. Yeah, we can do that. Time. But when you yeah. ask a question, Tristan, at least give your opponent 15 seconds to lay the case. I've given answer the question. Okay, let's do, I vote, I vote for this. This is, by the way, now I'm a stakeholder in the show, and now I'm going to vote on the show to have input. Okay, there's an example. I vote that we move to time responses then, because this guy can't handle back and forth. Okay, right? we're yeah, going okay. to do one minute timed responses starting now. We'll start with you, Destiny. Go ahead, Destiny. Uh, I don't even know what, what. Oh, so the example was how do we have we inputs on what thing? Was it who's? Is your name Destiny too? Did I? Yeah, no, my, it's it's, okay. it's time. Man. All right, my it's bad. Holy shit, I, I got mine fired. I thought my twin was here. Um, okay, so the way that we have input is through either protesting. So, for instance, there have been three major pipeline things that have been canceled in the United States, or it might be through our elected officials. For instance, the TPP largely died under Obama because it didn't have very much support um, uh, legislatively because people weren't too keen on being involved in the TPP. But even as an example of the TPP, if it would have passed, part of the provisions of the TPP were, was that while you were negotiating um, certain types of provisions, like what did labor have to look like overseas, part of the people that had a seat at that conversation were local labor unions. For instance, like the AFL-CIO had direct input on this legislation saying, hey, if we're going to have people in Vietnam manufacturing stuff for us, they need to have these rules and restrictions to make sure that we're competitive. That's an example of being a stakeholder in other businesses. And it's an example of how we can achieve something that that, that legislatively. All right. You're, you're okay, up. Cool. So that was a non-answer and completely, uh, completely uh, ancillary to what we're actually talking about here. This has nothing to do with AFL-CIO. This has nothing to do with the TPP. We're talking about the model of stakeholder capitalism as proposed by the World Economic Forum and this new system, the systemic overhaul of our lives that is encompassed by the Great Reset. So the Great Reset, as Klaus Schwab says, is a fusion of our digital and biological identities. Right, so this means that your data is going to be your DNA. You're going to be redefined. Your humanity will be redefined. Do you think that's a good idea to redefine humanity? And do you think you're gonna have a stake in this redefinition, uh, redefinition of humanity that Klaus Schwab proposes in COVID-19, the Great Reset? All right. So do you think it's a good idea to redefine humanity? I mean, I guess we redefine humanity all the time. I I, I don't know what the question, I, I don't know how to respond to that. The, I don't redefine the, humanity Can I finish and, can I finish? Yeah, he's got, Jesus he's still got fucking Christ. Seconds. So when you say, do you think it's a good idea to redefine humanity? I need like an example of like, here is a way that we redefined humanity that would probably be bad. So for instance, historically, it was assumed that once your heart stopped, you were dead, right? Well, now we found ways to restart people's hearts. Now you're considered dead when your brain activity is ceased or somewhere defined. Does that count as redefining? 
redefining humanity. If that's the case, I would consider that to be a good redefinition of humanity. I don't want to bring up like slavery and black people being considered humans because I don't know where you stand on that. That might open all other kind of worms. But in general, I don't think redefining humanity is always a bad idea. We're doing it right now in the United States as we wrestle over what the abortion laws should or shouldn't be. That's an example of redefining humanity. Um, when you, now, when you say, will you have a stake in this? Yeah, I have a vote. I vote for people that I believe in and hopefully, and I have a voice on a platform that I can talk to people and hopefully I share my beliefs and then hopefully that has some influence at the end of the day of how these uh, play out legislatively. Um, and then I will ask you a question because you keep saying this. You keep using this term, fusing our digital and biological identities. What do you mean when you say that? All right. So this is not my quote. This is a quote from Klaus Schwab. You believe that the fourth industrial revolution and the great reset are inherently good, right? You believe that they're good. You think those are all swell ideas. It's funny because I came in here to actually have like a discussion and a debate. Right now, a debate is going to assume that both parties are willing to change their mind. Both parties are going to actually bring arguments and both parties actually have a perspective. Now, it seems to me like you come into this debate just to debate. It doesn't seem like you actually care about a position. It doesn't seem like you actually care about my position at all, which is why you completely tune out several of my responses. So you say <clears throat> that this is all great. This is all a good idea. Right. You asked me, what is, the, uh, what is the fusion of the digital and biological? And let me get the exact quote from Klaus Schwab. Fusing here. our digital and biological identities. What does that mean? That's my ask question. Me, what okay. is the, yeah, let me find, let me find the, uh, the full quote from Mr. Klaus Schwab here. And again, this isn't my worldview. This is Klaus Schwab's worldview. Well, but it's the, the one that you're minutes. attacking. How could you not know the worldview that you just spent like 25 minutes laying out as horrible? You said this, you uttered this phrase like five times, did, fusing our digital not, and biological right, excuse identities. Me, excuse me. No, I, I didn't say I don't understand the worldview. I gave a 25-minute exposition of what this worldview is, the, revo the revolutionary worldview and the revolutionary faith that it's based upon, based upon materialism, humanism, and this revolutionary guiding spirit that we see pushing the Great Reset. I, I just gave a 25-minute presentation on exactly that. So to say I don't understand the worldview here, here is the quote, Klaus Schwab, talking about the fusion of our digital, uh -huh. <clears throat> of our physical, digital, and biological identity. So let me just pull this up here. And we to can be play clear, you don't know what this is. You have to go find the quote, right? Okay. Excuse me? Hmm. To be clear, you don't know what that means, fusing our digital and biological identity. You just think it's bad, but you don't know what it is. Just no, I didn't sure say I don't know what it means. I didn't well, then why do you need to go and find the quote? Why can't you just tell me in your own words right what it means? Okay, why don't you... All right, listen, can you slow down for a second? Go and play. You've talked four together. times as much as me, my dude. I'm sorry if I'm moving too quickly for you. Yeah, okay, you just, just listen. You can listen to Klaus Schwab tell you exactly what he's talking about here and tell me what you think he means because you think this is just a swell idea. I'm not you here to debate Klaus Schwab. I'm here to oh, debate you're not here Tristan. To debate. Yeah. Well, no, 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 I'm not well, here I'm to debate Klaus Schwab. Schwab. I'm here to talk to you, dude. You're here debating for Klaus Schwab's ideas that you don't even understand. So you think this is all great, but you don't even understand the ideas. You're, you're clearly not actually here to debate. You don't actually understand you, the topic can, at So you all. can't, okay, so. And you're not even here debating in good well, faith. You, you do, you I'll do. give you the benefit of the doubt, and I'll let you hear Klaus Schwab himself give you the exact quote that you were asking about. So here it is, okay? You ready to listen? You're going to keep your headphones on this time? You're going to stay and listen? Um, hit the play button. Yeah, I hope, yeah can we, I hope we get this other guy. The Klaus, so this Klaus Schwab guy sounds like an interesting dude. Maybe I should just talk to him next time instead of like his proselytizer or whatever. Okay, so you Wait, ready? you're actually playing me a video? <laughs> Holy shit. I'm sorry. You, you want to hear the quote, right? Do you oh, want he's to just giving you the quote from the video. That's my that bad. Like... I understand. That was my bad. What, what the fourth industrial revolution will lead to is a fusion of our physical, our digital, and our biological identities. <laughs> Um, when I wrote the book, I started to, to write it four for years ago. It was published three years ago. Um, uh, it was so very interesting over a million times in the world. And um, what, is, what is interesting is that 800,000 copies, more than 800,000 copies of those two million were sold in three countries alone, China, Japan, and South Korea. You may be interested who was the biggest uh, buyer with 16,000 copies at the same time. It was the Korean military. Um, so again, the idea of transhumanism has been used, <clears throat> has been uh, proposed by militaries. You have DARPA, very interested in transhumanism, uh, in the fusion of the digital, biological, um, uh, physical, digital, and biological identities. 
right? So the idea of transhumanism, human augmentation, um, you have the Ministry of Defense from the UK with a recent white paper, human okay, can augmentation. Can I make a quick request? The you're, dawn of a new phenomenon. All right, just, look, if, you, if you're just going to interrupt You're like every playing time, videos and rambling. I just want to be like really concise. No, 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 no. I'm, not, I'm not playing videos and rambling. First of all, that, that's not what I'm doing. I'm you're, actually making an argument. So, you're, no, no, I'm, you're not, I'm, I'm not asking you for an argument. I just want the definition. Hold on, hold on. No, no, this is a debate and we're here to make arguments. I know you're not actually here to debate. I know you're not actually here in good faith. No, You've actually... You, you Tristan, 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 he's just get, he's asking for a point of clarification. Yeah, I'm literally just asking. I just because I don't. You're right. Okay, I don't know what the fuck we're debating right now. I am lost, and so I'm asking you, Tristan. So why would you come to a debate? I'm asking, no idea. You're because I didn't realize how ideas. I didn't realize how out of my league I was. This Klaus guy is hit me with some big thoughts. So I'm asking you for guidance. Cool. Okay? okay. Now you're telling okay. me that this guy is saying he wants to fuse our digital and biological identities. I don't know if I should be scared of that or not. So I'm asking you, Tristan. Can you tell me I'm what not, the I'm fuck does sure that mean? Should we be scared of that? Do you think that's a good idea? Well, like, you're th telling me that it's not. So I'm asking you, why is it not? What is it? Right. That's all I'm asking. Right. Well, he's, he's pointing to this transhumanist reality where we will be essentially using biosurveillance devices ubiquitously and what they call the Internet of Things and the Internet of Bodies. Right. So in the, uh, the introduction, I'm sure you caught those terms. I used those about four times. Um, so the Internet of Things... <clears throat> And the Internet of Bodies are frameworks to connect all human organisms to the Internet via, uh, via surveillance devices that will be on us as well as inside of us, which is why Klaus Schwab says that the fourth industrial revolution will transform us. So it's an idea of transforming ourselves, human augmentation, transhumanism. Okay. So, I mean... This so, is essentially so, something that the military has been talking about for a long time. DARPA, gotcha. the Ministry mm -hmm. of Defense, also like these ideas. Okay. So would like would cell phones count as this as surveillance devices because they're devices that we keep on us at all times that like can keep track of our location or and, uh, Klaus Schwab's talking about like implantable medical devices. Okay. Stuff like that. Can like, you give me an example? Have, have do these things exist? Yeah. Can you give me an example of like an organization that's implanting these or people that have gotten these that didn't opt in for them or like is there any example of this happening? What uh, what are you asking me that didn't opt in for them? No, yeah, like forced. Uh, yeah, has this happened to people? Are there like is, it, is that would it have to? It would have to be forced. I mean, nobody's being forced to have these implanted in them. Well, if people are opting for like, if people are opting into something, then it doesn't seem like it's very conspiratorial. Then it just seems like people choose to do. You're something. the one who keeps saying that this is conspiratorial. Nobody said anything about a conspiracy. This is open. Okay, to right? be, this is not a conspiracy. Sorry. This is when I, open. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. When I said conspiratorial, I just meant like a like a, there's a giant plan for something, not like fake. Okay. So I'm, I'm just no, no. This this isn't. This is open. It's being yeah. planned. It's being promoted by the mm -hmm. World Economic Forum, Global okay. Corporation. Yeah, yeah. So can you give me an example of like one of these biosurveillance devices that you don't think should exist? Did I say they shouldn't exist? See, and again, you're you're trying to straw man my arguments. I'm not. Make, can you please stop arguments? using debate bro yeah. terms? I literally. I'm no, just no, asking. No, question. I don't even know what the fuck you believe. Wait. So you think these are you good things? <laughs> you're, you're playing a sneaky little game here where you're not letting me actually Fuck, explain this guy is like my psychotic. position, which I, which I, I do explain my position in the very beginning. I'm not saying that we shouldn't have technology. My position is not that we shouldn't use cell phones, which you just try to straw man, right? These are not debate rogue terms. These are actual logical fallacies. Do you believe that you can use logical fallacies in a debate? You no. came here to debate. Okay, yes, hold on. Let's back it up for a second, okay? You, you believe you that you can use logical fallacies in a debate? Absolutely not, okay. Let's just... Okay. Wait. Let's just. So, can right, we just so here's, wait. Here's can we just? One example. Hang on. Hold on. Hang on. Hold on. You got your minute. You got your minute. You got your minute in. Let him respond to some of what he you asked said. me a question. And I was going to answer the question. Okay. We'll get back to it. I promise. Go ahead, Destiny. Okay. I just want to pull back for a second and just chill. Yeah. Okay. I'm just curious, it's Tristan. Deep. Like, what's like your Old favorite TV shit. show? Like, do you like Game of Thrones or? Are you into? Yeah, the, the, where I'm here to debate. The Great Reset. I'm not here to play pretend friend. I'm not here I'm to just, play weird. Right now, this is so. I actually debate. Okay, yeah, so... I'm here to actually debate. Okay. So you want to completely derail, and you want to talk about Game of Thrones? Okay, one I mean, of two you, things... Do you, just want to, do you just want to admit that you're completely out of your element, like you said earlier, and that you didn't even come here to debate? Okay, so usually I do this analysis post but So right now, one of two things is happening, okay? Either one... No arguments. Yeah, so either one, you are actually, like, experiencing psychosis right now, and you've completely broken from reality, in which case nothing I say is going to get through to you, and nothing you say is going to get through to me. Or two, you're just somehow just got off on the wrong foot, you're very emotionally invested in this argument, or I'm too emotionally invested, and we're literally not connecting on no, no, anything I, I, I we're saying. I couldn't care less. I'm here to actually debate. Wait, okay. I'm here to actually debate. But Dr. you're not... Strawman out. You're, 
you're, you're not, describing you're, you're, okay you're not you're, debating you're, no we're not debating right now okay i i don't even debating. know i don't even you're know what your debate. i don't know what your position is on anything because every time i stated I, my position for 25 every minutes in the time, beginning you didn't you just made it you, you stated this klaus report. guy's position that you explicitly said you disagree again. with you want me to state it again okay so i'm asking you for a very simple i'm just a simple question okay so you now maybe oh, you're, you're going to shift and change it to something else. Now. No, you're not I'm not. I'm you're not changing. I'm going back to the question I asked earlier. Well, I, why don't you just call me psychotic again and ask me what I, I didn't. Like I said the second option is maybe we're just like too <laughs> why heated. Don't you, why don't you just call me some names and then tell me that you don't want to debate again? Right, I'll, I'll, let him let him, let him, okay. let him talk for a second. Man. All let I'm asking is, okay, so the biosurveillance okay, thing i'm not yeah. shift no we haven't even gotten to the shift field the there are no goal posts yet okay i don't even know how to score in this conversation all right so yeah 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 because you won't let the conversation actually get started we, conversations are, are two-way streets we have to be able to understand each other's points and then respond to those points okay dude I mean, if this was a formal debate if this was a formal debate you lost three minutes into it man this is so you're throwing out ad hominems making false equivalent statements you're using every logical fallacy you can get your hands on, and you're refusing to actually debate. Do you have a question? Yeah, I keep trying to ask it, and then you keep interjecting. All right, can I ask it? Ask a question. Okay, so my question is, it's a short two-parter, is what is biosurveillance? Like, or, or you kind of answer that, but like, what is an example of like a biosurveillance device that you're opposed to? And then two, do you think that biosurveillance is even a good or bad right, I'll thing? I'll do one at a time, right? We'll do okay. one at a time. Yeah, so gotcha. what is a bio, that biosurveillance device? Did I say that I'm inherently opposed to biosurveillance devices? No. Okay. No. So again, you're trying to straw man an argument that- How I am I straw manning you when I'm asking? Okay, I'm gonna just keep that. How am I straw manning you when I'm you know, asking a question? A How am I straw manning you, know, you when I'm asking a question? You tried to claim that I said that these shouldn't exist. Be, that, I'm sorry, but when you mention these as a bunch of like kind of bad things, it sounds like you say they shouldn't exist. But that's why I'm asking you clarifying questions. I'm not here to straw man you. I can just shut the stream off and just straw man you, or I can shut this off and just well, straw no, man you. Yeah, I'm yeah, not trying to straw man you. That's why I'm asking you a question. Okay, okay. you're not you're, trying to debate either. Uh, right, no, right, no, so no, you, because we haven't gone to the debate yet. Because to clarify, yeah, yeah, I, just, I don't even clarify. know what the fuck you believe about any of these things. Right. Okay, so I just clear. gave you a twenty-five minute introduction. Did you not hear my introduction? I you heard, heard it, it, but you didn't say. Yeah, because you didn't say anything. That's why I'm trying to get I to the main thing. Do you want me to do my introduction again, and then we just close this out? Holy no. Christ, no! Please, God, no! Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, all I'm asking you is like, all right, listen, listen. Here's one example: implantable living pharmacy. Could control body sleep wake cycles. Project receives DARPA contract, that's the military, worth up to $33 million over four and a half years. Northwestern University led team of researchers has signed a cooperative agreement with the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency to develop a wireless, fully implantable device that will control the body's circadian clock, right? So, wireless, so it's controlled externally, your circadian clock. So, I'm sure you think you'll be a stakeholder in DARPA's wireless security uh, uh wireless implantable device that can control the, the uh, body's circadian clock and the wake sleep cycles um this is one example there is a myriad of these there are implantable microchip um uh implantable microchip uh what's it called um, uh, contraception implantable mic microchip contraception let me uh, just pull all right so okay can we just focus on this one thing instead of like, no, no, you, you ask, I'm answering your question, dude. Do you not, not, gonna, not okay. gonna let me answer We're just gonna he, keep rambling. He, he, no, here at the Washington Post. Listen, you, guys, you, you guys both did say you would have a one minute back and forth. It's fair to let him probe. He's just trying to flesh the position out. So he let doesn't want to do the position. He's, He's made it a but, but I think he, he does. I think, I think just give him a minute to flesh it out. Let him flesh it out so he understands it better. Go ahead, Destiny. You can I'm flesh the position out that's totally legitimate <laughs> to do. So... So in, in talking about this device, do you think this device is a good thing or a bad thing? Do I think this is inherently good or bad that this exists? That's not my argument. No, but but he's just the asking for a he's, device is good or bad. The argument Tristan, is a Tristan, comprehensive. Tristan, you're the concept. professional in the, Tristan, definition. let me let here. Tristan, you're the professional in the room on this. You studied it. We're trying to figure out what your position is on it since you know so much about it take a position on whether it's good or bad. It's not a bad thing argument, if you think it's bad and it's not a bad thing if you think it's good. The argument is not that an implantable microchip is a good or bad idea. This is one small aspect of the Great Reset, which is what we're here to debate, right? Now you wanna zoom in on one aspect, that's fine. We can talk about this. A microchip that is a remote control contraceptive device that's implanted under skins. Do I think this is a good or bad thing? I, from my position, Right. Who be I believe that morality is objective. 
right? So contraception, um, you know, reproductive health services, abortion, we inherently think that this is a bad idea, right? That we shouldn't be killing babies. We shouldn't be using contraception. Man is made in the image and likeness of God, and we are actually commanded to be fruitful and multiply. So this okay. specific device, that is not my argument, though, in this debate. And, it right. does, and that is not actually important to this debate. The debate is about the comprehensive Great Reset. Okay. Right? So if you actually rewind and okay. listen to my initial opening statement. Can I go a little bit? Can I? Really, sure, really wait, quick. Or, let, me, let me just try and help. Let me just try and help. So Destiny, this is what he's saying. Oh, no, no. This wait. Yeah. I'm, I'm, so I'm going to broaden this and then I'll ask okay. for him to clarify. Okay, cool. So Tristan, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm not trying to straw man, escalate, whatever, ad hominem. Okay. So this was my assumption of this conversation. Now, maybe I wasn't paying attention well enough, maybe I said, okay. So it sounded to me like what you were saying is that there is a large force moving, um, both in large corporations and in government and in these intergovernmental agencies and everything that are trying to enact or enforce on us this great reset. And in this great reset, they're trying to move hum humanity in a certain direction, socioeconomically, politically, biologically, they're trying to move us all in a, in a certain direction. And it sounded like the way that you were talking about this is that this is probably not a good thing. So for instance, earlier when you mentioned about um, redefining humanity, you made it sound like that was a bad thing. You don't want to redefine humanity. So my assumption is that you have this large migration of us into some area. And in order to migrate us socioeconomically, politically, biologically, biologically, transhumanly, whatever, in order to migrate us there, there's going to be a whole subset of actions taken that are moving us in that direction. And my understanding is that you would be opposed to all of those minor actions because all of them lead to what would essentially be the Great Reset. So what I'm trying to ask is, what are some examples of these smaller actions that are being taken where you see that and you're like, hmm, that thing right there, that's a bad thing. It doesn't serve humans. It doesn't serve any of the greater good. That's just something that's being put in place to move us towards the Great Reset. That's an example of something malicious that's being undertaken by the government or by uh, some large corporation that we should be fighting back against. That's what I'm probing you to try to figure out. What are those things? That I mean, you're just trying to state my position for me again. Now, I'm not here for you to make up a position for me and then tear down that position. That's called a straw man, right? So you didn't actually listen to my introduction, which is very clear here. I believe that the Great Reset is not a good idea believe that the Great Reset is inherently not a good thing, right? Now, you are arguing for the affirm or for the negative. You're so normally I would like do the analysis after. I don't know how to like, I don't know if I can like get through to this guy at all. I have no idea. I just, I don't know what I can say. I, I feel like he's crazy. Like he's psychotic. I, I, I have no idea. I don't know how to, I don't know how to get through. Right. So <clears throat> that this is what I came here to debate. We're debating the Great Reset. I'm not here for you to make up a position for me and then tear that down. Okay. Um, I'm can not I here ask to just, just real quick? Can I ask? Little, like, hold, do, do Andrew or Pedro, do you guys feel like I'm trying to strive in this guy? Or am I fucking crazy? Well, here? well, well here, here, I just read this. I just read a, a, a good comment. Okay. And it's, uh, it's saying the debate was over the existence of factual evidence leading to the Great Reset and whether it will happen or not. What Tristan, I think, while I agree, very, very complicated, was laying out pieces of evidence like you did identify, Destiny, that will lead to that, Right. So it, it's a matter of fact that it's happening. Well, right? so the thing, yeah, so here is the interesting, the interesting conversation about the Great Reset isn't like, are we changing as we move forward as a species or whatever? Because that's that's a process that's constantly happening, right? Like even saying, calling it the fourth industrial revolution, are you, are like, is that implying that you were opposed to the third or second industrial revolution? Like, I, I don't understand the implication of that. If somebody is going to say, for instance, like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit here and say that like, oh yeah, like nothing in the planet is changing. Of course we constantly are. And especially during great times of crises, things will shift around more than normal. That's not only normal on a governmental level, it's normal on a corporate level. For instance, if you file for bankruptcy, you'll reorganize your company. It's normal on a familial level. If something dramatic happens in a household, family members might move out. Somebody might be committed to an institution. Um, and it's normal on an individual level. If you hit rock bottom, you might make a dramatic change in your life. So we can argue that there is some form of change happening, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I think that it's more important to look at the changes that are happening to make sure that people aren't taking advantage of a situation to pass something that we might not be okay with. For instance, like the Patriot Act versus some 
somebody uh, taking advantage of a situation to pass something that we do want to happen. Um, for instance, like Elizabeth Warren uh, strengthening the Consumer Protection Bureau um, to make sure that people aren't like committing as much financial fraud or something after the 2007 crisis. Uh, that, that's that's like where the conversation I want it to be at. It's like, okay, well, if you think that some things are changing in bad ways, what are those things that are changing? Let's talk about that. You know, is Soros behind the scenes, you know, pulling the trigger on some projects that are going to fuck us later on? Or is it just like naturally economies and governments and, and people's like reorganize as like crises happen because that's always what happens. That's that's what the conversation I would hope would be about. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I agree. I think that this is what that conversation should be about, right? And when we're talking about fundamental changes to culture, uh, fundamental changes to humanity as are being proposed here, I mean, these people are proposing uh, a redefinition of what it is to be human, right? Now, when I asked you that earlier, you said you think that's a good thing. I mean, that, that would I assume I didn't say I was, that. Now you're strawmanning me, okay? No, no, you did say, okay, you're so you don't think, it, you said you think it could be a good idea to hey, redefine There, humanity. I said it could be, but I don't know what you mean by okay. redefine humanity. I needed you to clarify that. You didn't want to. You just talked yeah, a well, million times. Yeah. Well, this, you see Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum, when he talks about this in his book, COVID-19, The Great Reset, he doesn't actually define what we believe humanity uh, to be initially. He just says we can redefine humanity and gives a vague statement that this is a good thing, right? This idea of a new social contract that they're proposing. I mean, they have articles where they talk about we need a new social contract. Sure. So what are they proposing that's bad? What are they proposing that you don't agree with? So you, you th do you think that this is a good idea to have a new social contract? Why are you answering my questions with questions? I'm just asking you. I don't know what the fuck you even think is bad about this. I have no idea well, like, where you're, what your position is. State, they don't even clearly state what they want this new social contract. Okay, if they don't even have a clear statement for what it is, then why the fuck do you care about it? These guys sound clueless, like clueless dipshits. Because when you, like, actually, when you actually look at the worldview that they hold, when you look at the power that they wield, we're talking about the biggest corporations in the world. We're talking about like the World Business Council for Sustainable Development. This includes Monsanto, yes. Shell. Okay, I don't need an example of everyone. So this it, is my question. Listen, is, no, no, how no, are no, they no, wielding no. that power in a negative way then? That's you what I'm asking you know, next you, you, want, you want to keep cutting off. You want to keep no, cutting just, off. And not let me define these things. They want to redefine humanity. What do you believe humanity is? Now, from my perspective, man is made in the image and likeness of God. From my perspective, morality exists. There actually is morality. There is right and wrong. So if we're going to talk about should this, is this good? Is this bad? Is this, uh, you know, a, a, a desirable thing, right? There, we're going to have to talk about how we define what's good, what's bad. If we're going to talk about redefining humanity. We're going to have to have a definition of what humanity is, right? So, so me, when you me, say something, hold, hold on, hold on, really hold quick. on. Listen, listen, sorry. when you say, when you say that. Pedro, stop cutting him off. Jesus fucking Christ. What's wrong with you? I'm sorry, Tristan. Go ahead. Right, so chill, 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 guy. I, I just wanted to try and put it back on track. So you both... It seems like here you I'm both trying to agree. Ask a question here. Let me, yeah, let me ask yeah. a question. So we're talking about fundamental aspects of reality being changed, being rearranged. Is this good or is this bad? Destiny. Do you believe that there is objective good and objective bad? Is there right and wrong? And are these objective or subjective? I would say that these are subjective. So right and wrong is subjective. Yes, I would be considered a moral anti-realist. Yeah. Yeah, is truth objective or subjective? Um, it depends on how deep you want to get into that. I, I, I don't know. I have to know where we're going with this. Are there universal truths? So, like, you don't believe that morality is objective? If I'm giving you the most fleshed out answer it? possible, right? <laughs> I would say that obviously I think that as humans, we need some epistemic foundation to have meaningful conversations. But I would say that if universal truths exist, it would be foolish to assume that humans have the capability to access said universal truths. I don't know how deep of a meta -ep epistemic argument to get into. I don't know how that's relevant to this conversation though. So. This, con this has everything to do with this conversation. I don't think it about. does. I don't think we need to get into like we're crazy, about like right and wrong, good or bad. This is a this is no, a conversation. I, I think that we don't we don't need world. to have a meta ethical discussion to talk about the Great Reset. I think it's like most people would no, no, probably. If, if we're talking about look destiny, if we're going to talk about what's good or bad, right or wrong, and you don't believe that there is any inherently good or bad, right and wrong, anything, if you don't believe that there's a standard for good, bad, right or wrong, or truth then how could we even have an argument? You don't, do you believe there's objective truth? I think we act as though there's objective truth. Otherwise, everything dev uh, devolves into absurdity, of course. That's why I literally said we have to have some epistemic grounding for what we say, whether we can access universal truths or not. But you don't think we have access to universal truth? No, why do you think we do? Do you think that's <laughs> universally true, that we don't have access to universal truth? I don't think that we can know whether we have access to it. So you tell me, how do you know that you have access you to universal truth? You just made a truth? universal truth claim. No, saying I didn't. Don't, don't. You, 
Yes, just hang on, hang on. Let's go back to the. You just made a universal truth claim. Saying we go we're doing. Are you a presuppositionalist too? Is that where we're at now? Jesus this is, Christ! This is this is what you just said. No, my question to you then is: How do you know that we have access to universal truth? Can you answer this without using God? That's the only thing that we can ground universal truth in. How do you know? Right. The only way we can have universal truth, right or wrong, is God. Okay. Uh, I, yeah. All right. I, you what? So you you deny the existence of universals? Uh, you, you I, like, universal. are we going to do presuppositionalism now? Like, I fuck. This is like an AIDS conversation. I'll bring in like Darth Dawkins. It, it, you guys can go back and not, forth no, for no, no, hours. It's not presuppositionalism. He is actually bringing up is, a, a good argument. A, it's is, called examining the worldviews. No, think, so I it's think, a, this is a presuppositionalist approach to epistemics because basically what he's saying is that the only way that you can know that you have access to this truth is because it's granted to you divinely through God, and the, through God granting you this ability to have access to truth, you know that you have access to it because God has granted. It's ultimately circular, but like everything is. But it's a presuppositionalist yeah. argument to set up like moral questions and epistemic questions. But it's like, fuck, this is like a whole other philosophical like bullshit that we have to get into. I don't know why. But the problem was no, at the beginning of this about... whole line of argumentation is you asked the good or bad destiny. That was you. Yeah, you, so there's you, different. You said yeah. that, and now and now what's mm -hmm. happening is you both you both agreed on a change is occurring, and now you have mm -hmm. to examine each person's worldviews to see if that thing is actually good or bad. Sure, but so that's what he's doing. So when when you, so you have a conversation of like what is good or bad, right? You're typically not asking this on the highest level of ethics. You're not asking like on a meta ethical level. So for instance, let's say I get into a car crash out on the street and you know like a cop walks by or the person I hit is like oh my god like was this good or bad and you're like hmm well what do you define as the goodness right we all typically in society work on these shared ideas of like what goodness and badness is we don't have to have meta ethical debates with every single person we talk to that uses the term good or bad this is like purely debate bro like semantics like nobody in the real world actually oh, engages the conversation semantics, the you only just, people that deny. argue about meta ethics are philosophy people going after their PhDs and masters of nothing else they want to write about that speak way too much They're German okay nobody cares about this shit Destiny, we're talking about philosophy. I care about this. You're here to debate the morality of the Great Reset. No, I'm not here to have a meta ethical debate. I was here having an applied why, ethics why discussion. We're three levels. We're why? three levels beneath it. I'm not here to talk meta ethics oh. with you. Okay, so, I'm here to have an applied ethic. We're talking about the actual policies as they are applied in the Great Reset. That we generally agree if they're good or bad. You, you want me to grant you and assume all your metaphysical presuppositions so that you can make an argument when you don't even believe that there is objective truth. You want me to pretend like there is objective truth in your worldview so that you can ground that worldview. Is the that beauty of normative and applied ethics is that most of us agree on most meta ethical things anyway, even if we don't come from That's a similar place. That's a logical fallacy of most. Just not, because please most stop using people. debate bro terms. Holy shit, it is so it's fucking cringy. Debate, bro, you are, okay? This is not a debate. Two people, I can a have debate. a conversation with a you Christian. Can't have a debate. I can have a conversation with a Muslim, if they're asking me something like, hey, is me chopping your arm off good or bad? We don't have to come from the same meta-ethical position to have an agreement that this is a bad thing. That's the beauty of society. A lot of people can come together with totally different meta-ethical foundations and all function and operate perfectly fine under the same legal free framework that is laid out legislatively in whatever country you're in. You don't have to share meta-ethical oh. assumptions or agreements with other people to have the same applied ethic levels. It's just, it's, you're being fallacious there, boom. No, you, 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 there's so many logical fallacies that you just used. And when I call out your logical fallacies, you interrupt and you scream, these are debate bro Nobody. tactics. Okay. Dude, this is how a debate works. If this was a formal debate, you lost it about 15 times over, dude. It, but it wasn't. There, it was, it's an informal, it's an informal, it's an informal debate that, that has back and forth. I do understand your point. Don't get me wrong. But how can we move the conversation forward in your view? How can we move you the conversation we can? forward about ethics? How can we move the conversation forward about ethics? Well, about say, not, this isn't a conversation not, about wait, ethics. Wait, wait, wait. Here, I'll, help you. I'll help you do it right wait, now. I'll help you both do it right now. Just point. listen. Just listen. I'll help you do it right now. Instead of calling out it as just a fallacy and just throwing that out there, and I and I totally get what you're saying, Tristan. Why not ask a question that probes, that leads onto another question that ultimately leads to, yes, that is why this is not right, because that is what you just described, a fallacy. He Don't doesn't just, believe that right or wrong exists. This is the thing. How can we have an actual discussion if he doesn't even believe right or wrong exists, that good or bad are objectively real? 
This guy doesn't even believe that there are fundamental objective truths. He thinks that truth is just relative. He thinks Tristan, that he you're is using my same jam. I, I'm on the same jam. I gotta say, so right? why would but I let him? What you have to do, your you. job as a debater, is to breadcrumb him into the into the cave of knowledge. No, no, no. no. My job as a it. debater, my job as a debater, is to end the debate when he admits defeat. This dude has done nothing but throw out logical fallacies. Okay, you know what? Okay, how about this? I'll be, an I'll be, ca I'll be Catholic. Ground, he can't even ground. Okay. he can't even ground morality and I'm, ethics. In I'm Catholic. Book, I'm Catholic. I'm Catholic for this conversation. That's my meta ethical position. Okay. Well, okay. Where do you want to go from here? That's your see now. Now you're clearly debating in bad faith. I'm not debating Why in bad. I went to Catholic school for 12 years. Okay. We studied the catechism. We did all of our shit. I went to a Jesuit fucking all boys high school. Okay. I'll debate from a Catholic perspective. Well, you, That's no, you are you argue just like a Jesuit. Um, so, <laughs> anyways, this is this is the debate is actually over, Destiny. You lost the debate, dude. This is done. You're clearly not even debating in good faith. Like there's no there's no point in proceeding. You don't believe that objective right and wrong exists, yet you want to debate the ins and outs and the rights of wrong and wrongs of the Great Reset, which I objectively prove is real, is global in nature, right? So if you want to debate someone else in the future about the Great Reset and play these stupid little games and uh, and pretend like you can actually ground ethics and morality in your worldview and make objective moral statements and objective moral claims while denying objective morality. Then you can do that, but why would I allow you to continue this? Why would I allow you? You've lost the debate. It's over, dude. So it's do done. you think that two people can only have a conversation about policy if they have the same meta-ethical grounding? Uh, we're having a conversation about ethics and morality. You, uh, did, That's where did the you, debate Wait, hold on. Is did gone. you hear my question? Can you repeat my question to me? That's, this is not how you debate, dude. You don't okay, ask wait, somebody okay. to repeat the question. He because wanted, you didn't answer my question. question. This is insane, dude. You're Holy shit. Your question. Dude, I know a girl that you, you two would be perfect for each other. Um, okay, so I'll ask again. Do you think that two people with a different meta-ethical position can have a conversation about ethics or policies? Or We're having a conversation about ethics and policies. And in order to have this conversation about ethics and policies, about morality, we're going to have to talk about the fundamental measures that we use to determine if something mm -hmm. is good or bad, right or wrong. Okay, so you, you don't believe it does exist. Yeah, so you're saying that if two people have different meta-ethical foundations, they cannot have any meaningful conversation. That's not what I said. I said this conversation right now. Okay. I asked you, how are you going to determine what's good or bad, mm -hmm. right or wrong? This conversation not is not, this conversation, to be clear, was about the Great Reset. It wasn't about yeah, meta-ethics. So my it's conversation is, can two people with different meta-ethical foundations have a conversation about the Great Reset? Or is it impossible? Yeah, we're having a conversation. We're not right? having a conversation about the Great Reset. You've brought it back to meta-ethics. So my question is, again, for we're the fourth time, we're not having a conversation. No, we're not talking about the Great Reset. Yeah. We're talking about meta-ethics, okay? That's what we're talking about right now. So my question all is. Right. You're, you're all over the place, man. I don't know. It seems you keep like moving your jaw all around. It kind of seems like you might be on some of some sort of drugs. It's kind of strange. Um, Come on, you don't. You don't, you don't, you don't have to. It doesn't have I, to. Go I feel there. like some drugs would help you a, a great deal. You should check out some some great antipsychotics that are available in the United okay, States. Okay, something okay, to bridge okay, you back to the so, to the real so, world, yeah, maybe. Again, but um, again, you yeah. can, again, you cannot you cannot ground your reality. <laughs> mm -hmm. your, your, you cannot ground your morality rather. In your worldview, you've admitted that mm -hmm. you want to have a conversation about morality and ethics, but you don't believe that you morality should, yeah. and ethics so are So in the future, real. you should say, like, I don't want to debate you about the Great Reset because I don't even know my own shit. You should say, I want to have debates about meta ethics. Oh, no, no, That's I, what you should I, say I, in the future. Dude. Just say that. Just say that. <laughs> Again. Just say that. Can, and, then, and that way, because then I'll skip the shit. Go, who the fuck wants to argue meta ethics? What a pointless fucking conversation or, 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 or epistemic truth or whatever. Like, Jesus, fuck. Like, I have philosophy friends I could talk to about this shit. I'm going to talk to fucking random bald dudes on the internet about fucking meta ethics. Like, what a waste of time. Holy shit. Yeah, swearing a lot makes you right. Um, you know, I'm you, sorry, is God judging me for that? Can we get to the evidence of the Great Reset? No, we're not talking. I laid out the evidence. In the can't, we can't talk about that. I don't even believe in objective universal truth. How can I understand anything about the Great Reset? Right, Tristan? I've already laid out. I've already laid out the right. facts. Can we get back to that? Can we get back to those facts? What do you What do you think about, for instance, what, what uh, this guy Schwab said? 
what are your, you know, what, what's your feedback on that? What's well, your, I'm still trying to figure out, like, what is when he says redefine humanity, what the fuck does that mean? What is his definition of humanity? Yeah, he's, he's wants, they want to move us towards a transhumanist future, I told you. This includes an internet of bodies, an internet of, thing, internet of things where everything is tracked and traced by a central global authority run by corporations and governments in public-private partnerships, as I said in the introduction that you Yeah, so listen. my question to you is that, that you just described cell phones. So, and, but you don't think cell phones are evil or I bad or whatever? I just describe cell phones. I, we're talking about as well. Uh, we're talking about. <laughs> Can you tell uh, me what you just device. said that doesn't it's apply? Cool. Wait, what did you just say yeah, that you just want to steamroll? No, I'm not yeah, steamrolling. Just... I'm, what did you just say that didn't apply to cell phones? What part of that doesn't apply yeah. to cell phones? And in cell phone is a cell phone's an implantable medical device. You didn't say implantable DNA. when you just gave that definition, and you didn't you earlier. Asked me for, you, look, dude, this is okay. the, you, you're, you're not debating in good faith. You're not even debating. Yeah, I'm the one in bad faith. Well, debating, he can pro, he can he can probe this the evidence. The, no, this is this is ridiculous. This guy's lost about five times over. Um, I've I've given him examples of the implantable medical devices including implantable birth control chips yeah and then i'm asking you if these things are bad or not or if you think they're good or bad or what you think an implantable remote control birth control chip funded by bill gates is a good idea it could be sure i'm asking you do you think it's a if you think it's a bad idea and i think it's good idea now we found something we can have a debate about now we can actually talk but you won't take a position on anything you just tell me what the santa claus guy is fucking saying i already told you birth control is inherently bad okay so but your problem there your problem there doesn't have anything to do with the great reset or any of the technological techno babble or transhumanist bullshit your problems you're just anti-abortion what kind of this is this is the silliest, ridiculous, most ridiculous no, debate. No, this is like me. Dude, this is like this is like you making the argument dude, that like I think that Mustangs. You, you're saying this is your argument. You're saying I think Mustangs are horrible cars and they're evil. That's we should never make them. And I'm like, well, That's what do you mean? Wait, why do you hate Mustangs? And you're like, well, because yeah. wheels are bad. And it's like, wait, what? So then your problem is with the cars, with the wheels. So you're giving me an example of like some implantable fucking birth control, and I'm asking you, okay, well, why is this bad? And you're like, well, I'm opposed to abortion or birth control. It's like, well, okay, so it's not. You use logical fallacies. You just and straw men, equi- straw men, fa- you, false equivalency, two yeah, yeah, yeah. coil fallacy. You think, um, you think those are okay? All right. Anyway, yeah. this is this is ridiculous, dude. You clearly come in bad faith. Absolutely. You say, all right. So you believe that? Mm-hmm. Hold on, hold on. I answered your question. I told you that I think that the implantable microchips are a bad idea. You think that Bill Gates developing implantable microchips that can mm-hmm. be remote controlled are a good idea? Uh, if you're talking about you something for good? birth control. Uh, yeah. depending on the application, remote I think that could be a good, I don't know what remote controlled means. You, you understand that you have to, def- you don't know what remote control means. Okay, great. Do you want me to give you an example of why that statement might be a little bit more complicated? I don't know what your background in tech is, right? Right. I don't know if remote controlled. It's a moral question. It's a moral question. Okay. First of all, if something is implanted in your body, it's probably always going to have to be somewhat remote controlled unless you're going to have to dig into it every time to fucking do something with it. Okay. Screaming in a high pitched voice Uh, without making an argument. And trying to steamroll and displaying really exaggerated emotional states physically does not win a debate. That's not actually in the, like that's not a debate, dude. Um, <clears throat> so you think that implantable microchips to uh, remote control microchips for birth control could be a good idea? Yeah. Then the question becomes: All right, how do you determine what a good idea is and a bad idea? What's the standard for these objective moral claims that you're trying to make about? the ethics behind some of these devices that you want to zoom in on and pretend like is the entire argument when it's just one little piece of what the great I can answer that question without the extra rambling if you want. Yeah, right? yeah. How, do you, how, do you, how do you determine what's good or bad, right or yeah. wrong? So typically in a liberal society, we give people the autonomy to make decisions over their own bodies. As long as they're making these decisions over their bodies and it's not causing a bunch of harm to other people, I think generally those are okay ideas. So if somebody decides that their choice of reproductive control wants to be some implantable birth control thing, and I see no problems with having birth control, then I say like, okay, well, that's probably an okay thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So... How do you determine what's good or bad, right or wrong? Now we're question. back. Now we're in, now we're back to meta ethics. Do you that's, want me to tell you like where any ethical conversation has to go, dude? You're, you don't, okay, see, so to be clear, gonna, earlier hold on, hold on, when I asked hold on, hold on, hold on. you, can two hold people on, of different meta ethical foundations have a conversation? Hold you wouldn't answer. So now you're saying the answer is no, they can't. Okay. No, no, no. Mm. look. Why do you get so uncomfortable when I ask you to actually? I'm not define uncomfortable. I'm just think. incredibly bored because I don't debate meta ethics. Okay, it's the why most, not. You won't debate. You won't debate ethics. Why won't you debate ethics? I'll debate ethics. I just won't debate meta ethics. Do you want me to explain what that means? Why will you not debate meta ethics? I don't want to debate meta ethics because I don't believe that there can be any truthful statements made about meta ethics, and I think it's all just a you bunch of people. Don't believe that there can be any truthful statements made at all. Okay, let me ask you a question. Okay, if you see somebody doing something that is bad. 
How do you know that thing is bad? How do we determine what is right or wrong, yes. good or bad? Yeah. In my worldview, we can actually uh, we can actually ground ethics. We can actually ground morality, mm -hmm. right? What is good and what is bad are determined by God. Okay, right? so, so here's creating, my question. Okay, that's what you answered. You don't want to let me answer. You won't let me answer. Jesus, dude, you, you don't actually so long. let me answer. God, fuck, brevity, dude. Come on. Oh, brevity. Oh, bro, bro. He wants to actually answer the question. You're not you answering the question. You already answered. You told me that it's God. Oh, so I have a follow-up. Oh, but now you're about to say a whole bunch of irrelevant oh, shit that isn't going to impact my next oh, question. Man. Go for it, dude. If you want to keep rambling, come go on, ahead. Come on. You're just rambling, dude. So yeah, I ask you a question, and when you answer, you're just rambling. You're just rambling, bro. Look, in my worldview, we can actually uh, ground mm -hmm. <clears throat> and actually justify good, mm -hmm. bad, right, wrong, okay. uh, logic, reason. Mm -hmm. In your worldview, you have no justification for logic for a reason. Hey, why you've are you talking about my role? This isn't logic. part of your answer now. You're just rambling. You you've understand? Actually, you've actually denied okay. objective truth. So Tristan, Tristan, here's my question. Morality. Tristan, I have just one question yeah. for you, okay? Let's say no, somebody else, me. let's say somebody comes up to you and they say murder is good. And then you say murder is bad. And then he says, well, how do you know murder is bad? And you go, because God told me. And then you ask him, why do you think murder is good? And he says, because God told me. How do you resolve that disagreement? Dude, this is the stupidest hypothetical. That's not an argument at all. Um, that's, dude, can you, just, can you do that again? That was really Sure, funny. I'll repeat the question to you. Yeah, Two people idea. try to resolve a moral quandary. Two people have a moral question, and they come yeah. to the answer and totally, they have two different answers for it, but they both say that they've received revelation through God. How do you resolve that disagreement and figure out who's right and who's wrong? This is the problem with grounding your meta ethics with divine revelation, and it's why presuppositionalism sucks. It's ultimately uh, circular at a foundation why, that is inaccessible to external parties. Do you understand? I could tell you that God has yes, revealed you, anything you to deny. me, and I automatically win the argument. Do you understand the problem with that? Do you That's see why not this the is the idea? You're straw man okay, in the argument. I'm not then can you tell me? Then answer the question. Two people that both believe in God. Two people that both believe in God have a different answer to a moral question. How do you figure out which one is right and which one is wrong? Truth isn't given to us simply intellectually. You try to intellectualize truth. You try to intellectualize morality, right? Morality is something that is metaphysical. It is something that is transcendental. We require something that is transcendental to ground objective truth and objective morality. Just so you know, when you're done with this ramble, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you the same question. So go ahead so, and ramble as okay, much as you want. So you, go ahead. This is, this is ridiculous. So you're not, you're not actually letting me answer the questions. You're I'm letting you answer right now. Go answer. I'm just, but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to ask the same question because you're not answering because you don't have an answer to that. And this is the problem. Fundamentally, this is the problem with people like you that try to make. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Again, you're just steamrolling. The debate was over 15 different times in this in this conversation. So I just want to draw everybody's attention to the fact that this is the final question where Tristan, yeah, Tristan will be done. He's shut down now. This is where all presuppositionalists come because guess what, guys? Moral fact is unobservable. And when somebody tells you that they can know moral fact through an internal experience, and when by definition your internal experience is inaccessible, the content of your mind is inaccessible to any other party, then we can never verify those contents. So if two people have a disagreement over what they both perceive to be as divine yeah, revelation, yeah, yeah. that disagreement can never be resolved, which is why meta-ethics is a garbage fuck waste of time, especially with a presuppositionalist that thinks that God is giving them the fucking answers. There has been a number of terrorists and cult leaders and people that have raped and murdered and shot and whatever yeah, people yeah. who all say they yes. got divine revelation of God and every just single one of them was just as right as the other person. So I will repeat the question once more to you, Tristan. How do two people, how do two people that disagree on a moral question resolve their disagreement when both of them say that God directly revealed the answers to them? See again, you, you, you accuse me of rambling. I start to give you an answer. You immediately interrupt and go on a long, messy ramble while nodding your head around like you're freaking. This is the dodge that I told you guys about. He's not going to engage yeah, with this question because yeah, this is what yeah. shuts down the pre-sub arguments. No, this I don't see you you keep rambling about pre-sub arguments. Mm -hmm. You don't even let me make an argument. Again, still not answering. You're spending a lot I'm of time like talking about why you, you won't answer, argument. but you're yes, not gonna he, answer this. Yes, he, let him answer. We're here to the great reset. Let him answer to it. Okay. Yeah. Answer to it, Tristan. He's Oh, am I am I allowed to speak now, or is uh, is is Mr. Uh, Mr. Methy Mouth gonna gonna be able to steamroll me again and uh, and go on an inco incoherent ramble while telling me that I'm rambling? Okay, so. When, when you're talking about ethics, when you're talking about morality, when you get to the meta level, right, you can observe the systems, the systemic, <clears throat> the systems that one uh, grounds their morality in, right, to see if it actually allows for the possibility of things like knowledge or ethics or metaphysics, right? So if you inherently deny that there is objective truth, 
If you deny that there's objective truth, you're actually making an objective truth statement by saying that, which when Destiny lost the debate earlier, he claimed that there is no objective truth. That's an objective truth statement, right? Um, his worldview has been shown to be incoherent. He came here to debate the Great Reset. We're, we're getting to the question of, are these ideas that are proposed in the Great Reset good or bad? And he can't give me an answer to what his objective standard for good or bad is. Right now, from my worldview, coming from my perspective, right, we believe that morality is objective. We believe that human beings are made in the image and likeness of God, which is why <clears throat> redefining humanity, right, human beings redefining humanity when we are inherently fallen, right, we are inherently fallen, we were created in the image and likeness of God, and through the fall and through the noetic effects of sin, we can't just do, <clears throat> we can't just make claims about what we believe humanity is just from simply observing humanity without revelation, right? So you can't. He's not even listening. So you, you cannot ground met, uh, you can't ground ethics, you can't ground morality in your worldview. In my worldview, we believe that morality comes from God. We believe that good and bad, right and wrong, come from God. We're coming from a Christian, from an Orthodox Christian worldview that is grounded in history, that is grounded in revelation. And good and bad, right and wrong, come from God. Without God, you can't have good, bad, right or wrong, which is why destiny does not want to have a conversation about how he can define what is good, bad, right or wrong. He wants to talk about broad generalities and make statements like, well, a lot of people believe that you can just talk about applied ethics in this frame or in that frame. And he wants me to grant him his worldview. I'm not going to do that, right? Objective truth exists. Objective right and wrong exists. We're talking about fundamentally restructuring our very reality and our definition on what it is to be human, right? So if we're going to redef redefine what it is to be human through this great reset, <clears throat> as proposed by Klaus Schwab, and which uh, Destiny says is just a great idea, um, we're going to have to define uh, to define what humanity is, right? We're going to have to define what right or wrong. We're, I'm sorry, we're going to have to be able to determine what is good or bad, right or wrong, if we're going to make objective truth statements. So he doesn't believe yeah, in objective right, right. Can I, Now can let's I, give him a chance to respond to that. Go ahead, Dad. Yeah, so my question was, two people have a disagreement on whether or not something is morally right or wrong, and they both claim that they know those things are right or wrong because God tells them. How do you resolve that disagreement? That has nothing to do with the argument that I just made. So you told me, you tried to answer this in a very roundabout way by saying you can observe systems, but earlier you uttered the phrase, you can't intellectualize it. Now, observing things with your senses and then trying to put together answers based on those observations sounds like intellectualizing to me. So I'm asking you, as somebody that has a solid meta-ethical foundation of the world where God grants you moral truth through divine revelation, how do you resolve a disagreement between two people that say that they're both inspired by God. How do you resolve and, that disagreement? It doesn't and Tristan, matter. And, and Tristan, doesn't wait, matter. wait, Tristan, wait. Don't don't just respond. Take take a second because there is an yeah. answer here. There is an answer here. Yeah, yeah. I think you both are just very heated and going back and forth. I'm not heated at all. I just, it's a simple question. Oh, oh, cool, cool. I'm just saying, take a second. Oh, think about the question. He's chill. He's chill. It's all right. Yeah, yeah. He's good. So two <laughs> Christians in a room claiming something. Yeah. One has to say what in order to actually prove they're in fact the one with the objective truth yeah see it doesn't ultimately matter what a single man says is true or is false what matters is what is objectively true truth is revealed by god so we're given truth in holy tradition in the holy scriptures right and from the orthodox perspective we have the holy scriptures and we have holy tradition we have divine revelation that is given to man's heart right so how can two people argue and determine what is true within that framework? It doesn't matter what two people will argue in a hypothetical situation of two people in the street trying to say, this is bad, this is good, this is right, this is wrong. What matters is what is objectively true. And that's not determined by us. What do you think about that, Pedro? Oh, so you're putting me in the in the seat? No, you're yeah, saying, yeah, well, because yeah. Pedro, you made it sound like you knew that there was a great answer. You can tell me in. You, can me in sir. You, said, you said you think there's a great answer, so like, so the moderator hat is off, right? No, you stay out of it. Stay out of it. Okay. Well, I want to hear. I want to hear. I want to hear what you think. Because I mean, you said you think there's there's something. There's a way that you could figure that out. Oh, he's trying to he's trying to get you to bail him out. Nice. You can do it if you want. He he needs the help. 
Well, no, no, no. Uh, you, you, the, the well actually, was you know, I, have my, I, I want to engage oh, Destiny. Lost. I want you to hold this line of questioning for after the debate and run me through the same drill, and I'll show you the stark difference. No, he so, wants the answer. He, he said he no, wants no, 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 no. I want to hear Pedro's. See, <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah. care about you what's can stay, true. Tristan. You can stay. I care about what's I don't, I, I, I don't, to, to Destiny, this is about winning a debate. To me, it's about what's actually true. Like, so to be clear, voice. we're not debating yet. Like I, we don't, I don't even know what you believe about anything. We haven't gotten to a debate. None of this okay, right now that we've done so far is a debate. Yeah. Yeah. Hear this? Yeah, okay. Okay. Jump in? yeah if you want to, Pedro. Yeah. Yeah, Pedro. Jump Jesus in. Christ! Holy okay, so fuck. So Tristan, okay. just just take a back seat. All right, Destiny. So yeah. what yeah, I would do if I was in face to face with another Christian and they asked. Oh no 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 no! Not with another Christian. That's easy because you can appeal to like my yeah. So let's say you're like with a Muslim, right? You're trying to figure out like I believe in the Hadiths and blah blah blah, and you're like, okay, well I believe in Scripture. How do you resolve? Solve these different divine revelations when two people oh, we, feel like they've been we, divinely we inspired. Taken, uh -huh. We were taken to the tenacity of the scriptures. We have five thousand four hundred uh, Greek manuscripts. We have one hundred over one hundred forty pieces of excavated, preserved papyri. We can go back and look at the original languages and see who, in fact, is actually talking about the real God, and who, really, with Muslims, it's who Jesus was, who can actually more accurately uh -huh. describe him. For Mormons, I would go to the Bible in the Old Testament and actually define actually that there is only one God because they believe there's going to be a, a, like multiple gods, so like a pantheon. For Jehovah's Witnesses, I would just go down to um, basic the identity of Jesus Christ once again because uh -huh. they believe he's Michael the Archangel. I'll take him to the scriptures. Sure, Each so and what every if one somebody... of these is in the uh -huh. tenac tenacity of history. Uh -huh. I don't need tradition, by the way, to do this. I could just go to what we have excavated. So history, yeah, so what what if scripture. what if somebody comes and they say, "Well, I am actually a believer in a religion and I think that a demon has revealed these things to you to mislead you." And I have oh, been so I've been so, granted so, so this so by divine. So the scriptures say talk about that. So I actually definitely believe that um what's his name? Joseph Smith definitely saw an angel in the forest. I just thought I think it was a demon, a fallen angel. So what so, happens mm -hmm. there is whenever you come into contact with an angelic being who gives you another gospel, the scriptures automatically say this is a demon before you. It's very yeah, but easy. what if somebody says that those the scripture itself, the original scripture, was right? Right. And by the way, the scriptures of which there, there were more of, right? There are multiple books that don't make the current scripture, right? That have been gone through councils um, that have been voted on the past for whether or not they're included or not, right? There are gospels that show Jesus with Mary Magdalene. And there's, um, other, you know, the different councils that have determined which books are in or out. How, I know what you're talking about: mm -hmm. the longer ending and the shorter yeah. ending of Mark. All this good mm -hmm. stuff. This has all been fleshed out within Christian debates. Mm -hmm. So, but, uh, but what already. do you say so, if somebody? Well, well, all oh, yeah, go, we have yeah, to go. do is actually look at uh -huh. the original languages goes back to the greek septuagint and the hebrew languages and we can find out who's actually telling the truth our history goes back into ten thousand years we have the most tenacity of any kind of written religion uh available to us so mm -hmm. very easy so we we have history on our side yeah, we so, have evidence. But, but what I'm saying is, this is the problem with divine revelation, though, right? So Jews are going to disagree with you, and they're going to say that, like, the coming of Jesus, he was not the divine prophet that was God, right? Right. Um, and, and other people could come out and say, like, um, they, it could be as radical as these languages well, well, were well, implanted by aliens. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah. The Jewish question, yeah, go for the it. whole Jewish thing, mm -hmm. the whole Jews. Okay, so what I would do is go to with the Jews and go once again back into the their own, the Torah, the law, because that's what we actually agree on. That's mm -hmm. the Pentateuch, the first five books given down to Moses. And from that, we can actually derive the prophecy that would give us the description of the Messiah. And then if I go just into the New Testament and then I start referencing all those passages that describe Jesus. Oh, look, we have Jesus who matches perfectly what happened in the Old Testament that was prophesied. This is the Messiah, Jewish people. You're waiting for, if I had to talk to the Jewish people right now, I would say you're waiting on something that's already happened. It was Jesus Christ. What would you do if keep another- Keep going, keep going, keep yeah, going. Sure, what would you do if another Messiah came and somebody claimed that this was the new Messiah? How would you resolve disagreements over whether it was or wasn't? I would do exactly what uh, Paul, uh, the Apostle Paul had an interaction with a, a people group called the Bereans. The Bereans took him to the scriptures and they said, hey, we need to check all this. And Paul, the apostle, who is one of the one of the people carried along by the Holy Spirit of God, he pretty much said, uh, "Good on you. You did right by testing me by the Scriptures." So every every single time, what we do is go back to what the objective truth, which is in the Scriptures, not my tradition, because traditions change. And not to say that I don't have any traditions, I do have traditions. I'm a fallible man. 
but yeah, that's but where we go. Wait, no, 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 Tristan, Tristan, Tristan. So just let me get through this line. I, yeah, I, so, I'm trying to get you to the other end of here, brother, because what you what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna hand I'm gonna hand you back the cake. I'm gonna hand you back the cake, and we're well, gonna go the 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 say, So okay, so okay, okay. so let's. Okay. Two, two yeah, so two I'm gonna step out, man. I'm gonna step out. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, so if we're talking about ethics, we're talking about morality, we're talking about how do we determine what's good, bad, right, or wrong, right? The debate is about the Great Reset. What is the Great Reset? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it right? Is it wrong? Right? So we're, you wanted to zoom in on the microchips thing. You wanted to zoom in on the, uh, what, the Internet of Things, Internet of Bodies, right? Determining if these are good, bad, right, or wrong. Where do you want to go with this now? I mean, you don't want to talk about meta ethics because you can't ground your ethics in your morality. You don't believe they're objective, right? Where do you want to go with this now, Destiny? I, I, I it sounds like an outhouse, but I think you're legitimately psychotic. I, I don't know what to say. Um, anytime oh, I try to push you on a particular We're thing about the where reason. I you can't finish debate. answering the question, what is, just the, what is the topic of the debate, dude? You, you want to debate? So the, the great topic was supposed to be about the Great Reset. So I was trying to ask yeah, you we about. We got into ethics. We got into we got into morals and ethics. How do you determine what's good, bad, right, or wrong? You said you don't believe that good, bad, right, and wrong objectively exist. Then you call me psychotic. So I mean, that's I mean, your ad hominems. Your uh, <laughs> I guess that's your argument, or that I'm psychotic. But do you want to debate the Great Reset? Do you want to debate the morality of the Great Reset? What do you even want to debate? I wanted to go into parts of the Great Reset, like actual examples of things that you think are bad. Yeah. That's what I wanted to talk about. But then you mm -hmm. wanted to talk about meta ethics, so I, I don't know. What because we're when about. we're going to talk about what's good, bad, mm -hmm. right, or wrong, that naturally is where it goes. So then, stop right, saying yeah, this is a conversation about the Great Reset. This is a conversation about meta ethics. Is it? Do you want it to be that? I've said you said you won't go there. there. You said you won't do that. No, I said I want to talk about the Great Reset. That's what I came here to talk about. Okay. Okay, so anyways, is there any, or do you have any more questions about my initial statement, my opening statement, which was comprehensive, which proved the nature yeah, of the Do you think the Great, the great reset, reset is good or bad? Yeah, I think the Great Reset is inherently undesirable, right? I don't even think you should desire this, even if you're coming from, you know, an atheist materialist standpoint. It's not going to benefit why, your... Why? I, I didn't, I'm not asking you if I desire it, dude. Again, you, oh don't, you don't let me finish any statements. You consistently interrupt. Oh, you steamroll. Okay. You use ad hominem attacks. Yeah, you make that your argument. Yeah. You, you think Straw that man, you can use that false equivocation. Well, do well. Do you have do you have uh, questions about his evidence? That's that's where I. That, I well, yeah, like but to, we're never gonna get to evidence. that. Yeah, the, I just I just we, I want to know about some of these horrible we, great I, reset things to see if he thinks they're good or bad or right or wrong or what they are. That's but. Yeah. Right. So I <laughs> see. I see what's going on. What's, what's it's going so on. disingenuous. It's so disingenuous the way you go about this. It's ridiculous, man. Well, so I've the problem is that, like, so what Tristan debate. has done. So what I laid out at the very beginning of this debate is actually in like my thirty-second statement. So the problem is, is that people build these grand narratives around this collection of facts, but when you start to analyze these facts one after another, they just fall over like dominoes, and then the entire. You haven't analyzed any falls. of the facts. I know because you them. won't let me because you want to talk about fucking meta ethics. Okay. <laughs> Oh man! So again, you straw man the position. You call it a conspiracy theory. Straw man, right? Look, conspiracy. You wanted to talk about remote controlled microchips and contraception. You want to talk about that? Yeah, and I asked you if you thought this was a good or bad thing, and you said, "Well, and I, I think." I told you it's objectively bad. You say, "Yeah, it's but good. it's not bad because of the Great Reset or because of technology." You think it's bad because you disagree with birth control? Do you understand how that's not relevant to this conversation? Absolutely. Just like I disagree with redefining humanity. What right, to what? What do you disagree to redefining humanity? Is what? You won't let me finish the sentence. Just like I disagree with the idea of fundamentally redefining humanity because I believe that it's not man's place to define humanity. Who the surprise? Right? It's not your place to define humanity. I don't care if you believe you're a stakeholder. I don't care if you think that sitting in your coom pot and eating freaking bugs all day is going to make you a stakeholder, that using your social credits to purchase free outside time, um, you know, to, <laughs> but in the behaviorist control grid that the Great Reset wants to implement, if you think that's a good thing, how does that make it actually good, right? Like, I mean, <laughs> you, you think that uh, you think that contraception is good? I think that it's bad, right? Like, we can just sit here and compare. Oh, I think this is good, or I think this is bad. And if it all comes down to an appeal to hedonism, right? If it's all just, oh, well, this makes me feel good, so I think it's good. That's ridiculous. Right. So I think that the, uh, the utilitarian perspective, the uh, hedonistic perspective on how to determine what's good, bad, right or wrong is silly. I don't think that it's a, uh, a viable framework. And I fundamentally reject that 
uh, th that foundation for determining what's good, bad, right, or wrong. So does that answer your question? Can you give me an example of technology by the Great Reset that you think is bad because it's related to like this redefining, not because it's against like something that you already think is bad, whether it's part of the Great Reset or not? Can you state that question clearly, please? So uh, you're not opposed to remote controlled birth control because it's part of the Great Reset. You're opposed to it because you're opposed to contraception. So can you give me something that's part of the Great Reset that you're opposed to because it's yeah, like- Yeah, redefining part of... humanity. Okay. Redefining humanity. Can you explain to me who's trying to redefine humanity and what part of that redefinition you disagree with? Well, the Great Reset represents a group of people global in scale, right? These are a lot of uh, world leaders. You have Prince Charles talking about a new covenant for nature, right? A new deal for nature is another one of these terms that's often used. You have Klaus Schwab. You have uh, the Rockefeller Foundation. Yeah, the Bill I Melinda need Gates like, Foundation. not just like a... oh, 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 I mean like, oh, let me just, let me just interrupt. I can't let you finish an actual- Okay, my oh, bad, keep going, go ahead. I just, you can't finish your actual argument. I'm not gonna let you actually make a statement without interrupting. It's just, you, you can finish, man, you can finish. So again, he's not even listening now, but he asked me to tell him who is trying to redefine humanity. I just gave him a list. Right. So the uh, this new digital identity system that they mean to bring in, I'm also opposed to that. I think that that not only is objectively wrong, I think not only is it objectively wrong to track, trace and control people as animals, but I don't want to give Bill Gates and Gavi access and control over a global standardized digital identification system as uh, proposed by the ID2020 group and Gavi. So, I mean, that's another thing right there. Okay, do you want to talk about just that identification system then or something? Or I, every time I ask you a question, you're you mention- You're asking me for a specific, and yeah, I give just you- Yeah, just one, no, you're like, not. You're oh, saying, you're oh, saying the Rockefeller said this, and this guy and Prince Charles said that, and this guy, I don't give a, I don't want to- Who's trying to redefine humanity? And I just gave you a list of the people involved in pushing this idea of the redefinition of humanity under the Great Reset. And then you're like, oh, I just can't hear all this. It's like you lose memory of what I'm actually answering. Like I'm, you, act, you lose the memory of what the question actually was halfway through my answer. And then you start trying to deflect and make me jump through new hoops as you move the goalposts of your questions. So like, this is not even a debate, dude. I've got like about five more minutes of patience. <laughs> yeah. can, you, can, you stick, can you stick around to answer some questions from the, from yeah, the audience? Yeah, from the audience or from you guys, I will most definitely. <laughs> stay as long as possible but you know may, maybe uh I, I know destiny doesn't have a doesn't really have a position i know he has no idea has done zero research on the great reset he hasn't even read klaus schwab's book dude you haven't even read klaus schwab's book covid 19 the great reset your initial position in this debate is that there is no global great reset right there clearly is <laughs> so like your position is ridiculous and you're debating just to debate you're not debating because you have an opinion. Okay, you can want I to ask you a different it? question? Do you think that You're um, not, you don't even care? Do you, you don't even care? Do you think that do you think evolution is like a thing, or do you think that's not a thing? Do you think that's all fake? This has nothing to do. with I'm just the, curious uh, because it's kind of part of the Great Reset, right? First, we I think make evolution up evolution is a theory. I think evolution is a theory, and one of mm -hmm. the foundational theories of the Great Reset. Okay. Do so, I think it's a thing? Yeah, I think it's. A do you thing, think it's? So. But do you think that anyway, it's accurate? So, do you think it describes things accurately? Do you think that, do you think that it is? Do you think that it's true? Yeah. Objectively? It's objectively true. I didn't true. say objectively true. I think it's a good description of the world. So you're not going to answer that question. Hold on. You do, you think, do, you think, do you think, do you think, do you think that, do you think dinosaurs existed on the planet at the same time as humans did? I think dinosaurs existed on, the, this is a debate about the Great Reset. I'm just curious. Just I'm just, I'm just, bro, I lost a debate. Yeah. I'm just trying to bro, see what else, I'm just curious what else you got. Oh, wait, bro. Let's go back to talking about Game of Thrones, bro. Like, let's just slow down. Talk about, like, your favorite. Like, what's your favorite movie, bro? What's I'm just your, curious. Do you, do, you think that, do you think that dinosaurs and humans were on the planet at the same oh, time? Bro. I'm just asking. Bro, do, do you think that, like, that, like, dinosaurs and humans were... Do you think people uh -huh. hunted dinosaurs? That'd be so I'm cool, I'm just curious. Dude. Do you think that humans and dinosaurs were on the planet at the same time? This is ridiculous. It has nothing to do with the debate. That seems this like a pretty easy question to answer. I'm just, I'm just asking. Do you think humans and dinosaurs were on the planet this at the same ridiculous. time? This is ridiculous. So one of, anyway, one of the questions you clearly don't want, you clearly don't want uh, one debate. of the questions that I have you don't want is, debate. This is, is, for, is for Destiny. <laughs> and the question states, Destiny, uh -huh. can you clearly define what you think the great reset is? Uh I don't think we need we need Tristan too. We got 
he yeah, i think he flushed it out pretty good <laughs> yeah i feel but like everybody has different kinds of, so my my i don't even know how many like mainstream politicians use this term great reset or i haven't heard any i know that there are people who write books on this or whatever like my my understanding of like what a great reset would be is that in a time of great crisis there's going to be a lot of money spent on different pro projects and it gives us the opportunity to reset some things in society in a way that might be better so for instance one example in the united states some people say that um, our current like healthcare infrastructure is really shit. maybe uh as we reorganize and as we kind of get our economy rolling again maybe Maybe there's a way to get rid of, to deintegrate um, healthcare away from the place of employment and find a way for the government to give us like a public option or some sort of like universal healthcare. That would be an example of like a great reset. Or maybe we have like different ways to ro uh, roll out like new labor laws or something to help workers. Or maybe we have different ways for uh, companies to operate uh, that is like part of like the great reset. That's my understanding when people talk about like a reset. It's, it's like the concept of like the Green New Deal. As much as I'm opposed to it, like the, the concept of the Green New Deal is that we make a whole bunch of new jobs and spending on infrastructure, but we do it in a green way. So we're moving in a different direction going forward. That's like the great reset. Set. It's just reorganizing things in times of great crises, namely the um, co coronavirus crisis. Tristan, did this debate go like you thought it would go? <laughs> uh, I, I, I really had no idea how this guy would debate. I thought he actually came to debate in good faith. I mean, he conceded in the very beginning, I'm not prepared for this. I'm out of my depth. I don't know anything about the Great Reset. Uh, I mean, he, he steamrolled the whole time. He obsessed, he incessantly used a, a, a logical fallacies. And when I brought up his logical fallacies, he goes, debate bro tactics. I don't even know what that means. Debate bro tactics. I mean, this guy has been the sneakiest, snakiest debater that I've ever seen. Um, but, you know, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, he, he doesn't like letting me actually get my points across. As soon as I start making a point and explaining my position, he derails and goes off the rails with some new points and tries to, uh, you know, shift the goalposts. Um, it, it's been ridiculous. I had no idea how this would go. Um, obviously, I prepared for this. Uh, my opening statement was comprehensive. Anybody who wants to understand my position on this and what the Great Reset is, listen again to the beginning of this so-called debate, which wasn't actually a debate, um, with my opponent, who I thought would actually prepare, uh, but he conceded the debate about 10 times. Uh, doesn't believe that morality is objectively real, but is going to uh, uh, argue for these objective moral positions, said that truth is not objectively real. There is no objective truth. Right, which is an objective truth claim, which refutes his own position. The dude can't even, he doesn't even believe in truth. So like, it's been bad faith the whole time from him. This is sad, but it is what it is. Wait, you, I'm actually genuinely talk. curious. Who do you think has talked more in this conversation? Tristan. Who do I think has talked more? Yeah, I, I don't know, I'm not, I don't have a timing. I don't have a timer, but it sure, it, you know, it feels like when you speak, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> It feels like it, it feels like incredibly excruciatingly long periods of time. So you do you speak. genuinely think we're close to fifty fifty in terms of who's been speaking like more? Where but we've spoken about this, or you think I've spoken more than you? I'm just curious. That that has nothing to do with the debate. I that never said it did. I'm just asking. Not everything has to do with the debate, right? I'm just asking we a question. Here to debate, huh? We're here to debate. So I'm just asking a question. Who do you think spoke more? I'm just asking a question. Uh, who do you think spoke more, and why do you think that's important? I'm just saying how. Keating well, word just, reality. Yeah, hey, just curious. What's your, what's your favorite okay, Game of Thrones? Sorry, go ahead. What's the what's Who, the next question? Who's your favorite Game of Thrones character, dude? Like, let's talk about Game of Thrones. Do you like do you like French fries? I like hot dogs, dude. Mm -hmm. Is that cool? Yeah. Okay. What was the with you? You had a couple there, Pedro. What, what did you have? You want me to chime in? No, you the question. I didn't. Oh. I didn't see the question. Sorry. Oh, okay, my bad. Uh, let me just bring it back up here for everybody. Okay, so we actually had a, a few super chats come in, and because and I'll apologize right now because of me picking a red font, they just came in all blurred. So I'm just gonna read it here. Uh, for three dollars, Dan Zemet, uh, he says, "Destiny, we see global organizations and people in power saying the world is overpopulated, but in reality, the birth rates are steadily dropping beyond replacement rates. Do you find this concerning?" I don't know who's saying overpopulated. My understanding is that um, 
So I'm 32 now. In the early 2000s and in the late 90s, we talked about overpopulation a lot. It was like a huge thing that the world was going to be crowded. But my understanding is that as people have seen birth rates slope off all over the world, now the mainstream thought is that I think it's the 9 billionth person will never be born. I, th I think it's 9 billion that will never reach that number. Because as countries industrialize, that might be higher. It might maybe be 10 or 11 billion. But as countries industrialize, birth rates slope off. I don't think anybody's saying that we're like overpopulated. Um, and if they are saying overpopulated, my guess is going to be that if you dig into those statements, it's more like we're causing environmental harm in certain areas because of consumption. It's not this idea that we're overpopulated and we need to depopulate the planet. All gotcha. right. And our next super chat, I'm just going to well, ask. Can, can I ask oh. Destiny a question? Oh, yeah, you Des get to interact. Okay. Go for it. Yeah. Uh, so you don't think that overpopulation is a good thing? I mean, people like Bill Gates who are proposing this global identification system are also developing remote control microchip implantable technologies for birth control, right? People who, is that, what's, what's funny about that? I mean, I've proven that's you, an you, objective. You, you pretended to ask me a question and you used it to monologue again. You're like a soliloquy machine. It was just funny to me. Sorry, go ahead. Don't worry about me laughing. So you, yeah, oh yeah, 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 uh -huh. just, okay. Just, uh, okay. Um, so Bill Gates openly says we need to depopulate. There are too many people. Develops contraceptive implant microchips that can be remote controlled, and is heavily invested in this ID twenty twenty global identification infrastructure. Do you think that's a good idea to uh, to all be put on a global identification system by this ID twenty twenty group that's manned by like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation through Gavi, the Rockefeller Foundation, big corporations like Microsoft? Do you think that's a good idea? Do you think that's a uh, something you would sign on to? Am I going to be able to answer this without I'm interrupting? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, so... Isn't it funny how he, he, yeah, he yeah, actually don't, don't, accuses no, let me let him, let him the answer very real. thing that he spent yeah, this yeah, whole but, but debate let him, doing? Let him answer. <laughs> let him, let him answer. Exactly what you do. Hang on, let him answer. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, Destiny. He, gotcha. he should answer. So... It's very hard for me to answer a question when you ask me something like, are you okay or not okay with this incredibly complicated technology that exists on a very macro level? I don't have That's a what way. This debate uh, is about. Let him finish. I don't have a way to answer whether or not a global ID system is good or bad. A global ID system might be something like passports. Or a global ID system might be something like you are being injected with microchips while you sleep so that the government can keep tabs on you. This is why I wanted to get into more specific applications of these technologies to talk about whether or not um, whether or not these things are good or bad, because I can't look at a broad meta or, or a broad like uh, macro level description of some technology and answer if it's good or bad. I need to know the application of it. I need to know something more specific about what it is. Okay, so all right. Oh, you're gonna interact. Oh, you yeah, oh. you can interact with it. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Um, so <clears throat> the you mentioned like passports. The ID twenty twenty group funded by Bill Gates Rockefeller Foundation. Uh, they actually are pro are promoting global vaccine passports. You think that's a good idea? A global vaccine passport. Um, Standardized. Internationally, yeah. Well, my understanding is that passports are already standardized internationally. Um, whether or not a global vaccine passport is good or bad, that's a really rough one. The thing is, is that if I think it's probably okay, countries should probably have a right to determine who they let in and out of their country, unless you would attack like a country's sovereignty and the ability to decide how they control their borders. So, I mean, this is happening right now, the global vaccine passport rollout. I mean, this is not, this isn't like hypothetical. I mean, this is being rolled out now under the excuse of COVID-19. And this is something that was planned long before that. ID2020 was promoting these ideas back in like 2018 at least. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, th th this is something that's not just in response to COVID. It's something that was desired even before that. Uh, but yeah, yeah, but I, I mean, like, I, I don't see it like, Depending upon where you're coming from, so I've done a lot of international travel, depending on where you're coming from, where you're going, you already have to do like certain vaccines or medical uh, examinations based on the risk of, of where you're coming from. I think if a country wants to determine that like, hey, in order for you to come into this country, you need to meet like this medical requirement, we already do it for immigration. Um, I don't think that's necessarily the worst thing in the world. No, it's not just for that, though. I mean, it's for going to restaurants as well. I mean, this is for going to sporting events, going to sporting venues, 
uh, possibly for interstate travel has been proposed by uh, the Biden administration. I have Dr. never Earl. heard of the Biden administration proposing for interstate travel. You need a vaccine passport. I don't believe that is true. They're talking about that as a possibility of something that may be needed in response to this. Well, that's I mean, this impossible. That doesn't work. In the United impossible. States, we don't, yes, we don't check. The, I, think, I think it's ridiculous too. I don't think it. No, no, I'm not saying it's ridiculous. It's we don't have the infrastructure to check. We don't have any type of passport in the U.S. like that. That, that yeah. doesn't, yeah, that's but not a federal this thing. Is, this is what the fourth mm -hmm. industrial revolution enables. Is okay, this you just, type you of walked out of all of that because you just made a bunch of shit up, but okay. I just made a bunch of shit up. So uh -huh. again, this is what the fourth industrial revolution and the great reset uh -huh. will enable through the smart city grid, right? Which is actually based on a global centralized standardized identification card, not card, but identification system that is digital, right? Digital identification uh, that's universal and worldwide. Everybody has a digital ID. All right, so this is this is what this I've never, can. I, I've never heard of a digital. The only thing I've heard of that's even remotely comparable to this is a passport, like an actual. But I'm sorry, we might. I, when you talk about passports, I'm talking about passports, like actual passports, not like. Yeah, well, even the, the passport could be, you know, the international passport, international travel. This could, uh, that could be implemented there, and it already is in some countries that you need certain vaccines. Um, you know, I mean, I I don't think that's a good idea, but. I mean, Wait, why not? Like, Wait, what do you mean? You, you don't think a country has a right to on, say? What I'm talking about, like venues, restaurants, stuff like that. I mean, the vaccine passport, they already have this in many countries. Do they you think, a, do you think a restaurant has a right to refuse certain customers if they want to? Do you think a restaurant has a right to refuse black people if they want to? No, because black people are a protected class in the United States. Whether or not you're vaccinated wow. is not a protected class, not part of the civil rights Why act. should black people be a protected class? Be, I mean... Do you want like the legal theory? Do you want the moral theory or I don't know what you want? Well, you don't believe in morality. So I guess the legal oh, theory. Oh God, you have to go back to metaethics. Um, what's the, uh, what's the next question, Pedro? Yeah, so sorry, just real quick, like, the legal answer, I think is the civil rights act is what gave us like protected classes and you can't discriminate against. Yeah, yeah. Classes. So, yeah, the moral but, argument yeah. is that like there are certain classes of people you probably shouldn't be able to discriminate against in society because it like causes like the destruction of society. If you can discriminate yeah. against like veterans or, uh, you know, like women or black people or whatever, like it, it causes like large fuck ups in huge areas of society that the market can't correct for. Um, Do you think yeah. that it's okay to discriminate against some people in society? Yeah. We discriminate all the time against all sorts of people for a variety of reasons. Yeah. For instance, when I go so, to McDonald's, I'm discriminated against trying to go into the play place. They won't let me in because I'm too old. But not black people, right? That's I, not. I okay. think black people are allowed at McDonald's, yeah. Yeah, but it's okay to deny unvaccinated people, perhaps. In, in if, a, if a business, <laughs> assuming that my understanding is that, like, whether or not you're vaccinated is not a protected class in the United States, so a private business has the right to choose whether or not they want a vaccinated or unvaccinated person, I think. Now, I don't know if they can demand uh, a... a hard to see it I'm not, I, I don't know i don't know maybe that's something that will be challenged in the courts and then we'll see how that um goes through but it's just funny so you 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 think it's okay to discriminate against some classes of people but not others but it's strictly from a legal standpoint yeah okay so you're using this word discriminate i don't know if you know what it means right so for instance like if somebody comes into your store naked you can discriminate against naked people right you, have you ever seen the sign yeah. no shoes right. no yeah, yeah, shirt yeah. no service to yeah. discriminate is to yeah. discern between different things i'm yes. not talking yeah. about that i'm talking about denying services to people uh -huh. Yeah, for certain people. Freedoms. Yeah, so some types of discrimination are, of, of course, good. We discriminate all the time in terms of who should like. We discriminate against who can drive. If you're four years old, you can't drive. There's some level of age discrimination there, right? But when it comes to like renting places to people, or when it comes to hiring people, or letting people in places of business, um, there are like sexual identities are protected. There are racial identities are protected. Um, veteran status, I think, familial status, like these are things that we've decided um, are protected. Now, maybe in the future, maybe somebody will say, "Hey, I don't think somebody should be able to ask your uh, vaccine." So we'll amend some part of the uh, constitution or amend some part of the legal code, I guess to say like, oh, well, these are protected classes too. I, that could be a thing in the future. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if, if all the corporations decided, uh, if the stakeholders decided that it's okay to Shareholders, deny, not stakeholders. Go ahead. If the stakeholders determined, meaning I guess you're a part of that because you believe you're a stakeholder. Uh, yeah, but the stakeholders, stakeholders don't make decisions right now. Shareholders of corporations do. You're using the okay, word incorrectly because so, you don't know what it means. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, I did. I, I do you know did, You didn't. I asked you and to define it. You included, couldn't, but go ahead. Shareholders are included in the stakeholders yeah. in the stakeholder capitalism model. Okay. Uh, you, you actually admitted earlier you had no idea what stakeholder capitalism is. Gotcha. Okay. You had no idea what the Gregor said is mm -hmm. uh, when you conceded the debate in the very beginning. But <clears throat> you think that it's okay to discriminate against some people, right, but not other people. And how do we determine who it's okay to discriminate against? How do you determine that? Well, legally or morally? <laughs> Morally, yeah, we're going we're going in a circle, but gentlemen, yeah. I gotta I gotta move but us but morally, forward. How do you determine that morally? I, I mean, morally, you see, like, does it serve the interests of society or not? 
So for instance, in some cases, age discrimination is good. Four-year-olds probably shouldn't be allowed to drink. In other cases, age discrimination might be bad. I don't want to rent this apartment to somebody that's 60 years old. I don't like old people. That's probably bad, right? And then we, whatever our moral code is there, we agree on that societally, and then we codify it into law. Okay. When, when the Nazis decided to discriminate against the Jews, that was okay because the Nazi society agreed together that that was... A I good mean, I, clearly in the Nazi society it was because it was codified as part of the legislation. I'm not a Nazi, though, so, and I'm not talking to yeah, you about Nazi law. I'm not saying you are. I'm not saying you are, but... I never said you that said that. I was, but I'm saying, like, if you're asking me like, from a Nazi's perspective, you, clearly they thought it was okay. It was part of their legislative system. It was part of their, like, whole military complex, yeah. And, but you say that you believe that's how you determine what's morally right and wrong. It's just who the, the greater. No, I'm, I'm just telling you where laws I, come from. I'm, I'm just. I, no, no. When I asked you how you determine what's good or bad, you said, well, society determines that. Oh, if you're asking me on like a meta ethical level, then I, we're going to go all the way back to our earlier conversation about how like I don't really answer those questions of good or bad on a meta ethical level. Because I think those. Oh, you can't go there because, you know, your, your whole worldview falls apart once you go there. You admit it you, fuck, you got me. You trapped me again. All there. right. Okay. All right. <laughs> Nat, go ahead. Moving forward. Move yeah. The questions. Yeah. yeah, let's Please get me forward. I need to pivot away from this one fast. Go. All right. So uh, Salokin donated five dollars. We appreciate that, sir. And his question is to Tristan. Did dinosaurs and humans exist at the same time? How old do you think the Earth is? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure what you mean about dinosaurs. Uh, he doesn't know that question that. means really. All yeah, righty, okay. No, so... he's got to answer. That was a. That was a. Uh, yeah, that was a. Wait, does. hold on. I mean, that yeah. guy donated. He's a stakeholder. He's a stakeholder in the stream. What you mean by dinosaurs? I mean, are you, are you talking about? What are you even talking about? Have you ever seen the movie Jurassic Park? Those guys. Was Jurassic yeah, Park was Jurassic Park nonfiction or fiction? That is the question. Yeah, it's a very cool atheist question. Is Jurassic Park uh, nonfiction? Job forty one. Job forty one. Job forty one. The atheist literally lives in a fantasy world, right? Created by Hollywood of a mythologized reality with this made up, <laughs> uh, this made up <laughs> freaking. It's like the fucking Matrix. Up. Yeah, so that's, that's a very atheist uh, perspective. Fucking A, bro. You know what? It was scientism, I think. That's, what, that's where scientism comes from. These fucking atheists. They think they can use science to determine what is right and wrong in the world. It's fucked up. Same guys that are controlling the You, you can't use science. Do you, you actually believe that you can use science to determine what's right and wrong? Well, I do, because I'm an atheist, and I believe in scientism. Okay? Do you science believe that God. science can determine what's right and wrong? Oh, you yeah. That? Fucking A, dude. Do you actually believe that? I mean, see, the, you, you're not even... <laughs> You're not even here to have a good a good faith conversation. That's like what is what a strange way of You know who which prophet I believe in? I believe in the prophet of Sam Harris. He's my god, okay? Well, that's a false god. You should come to the real living Jesus Christ who died for your sins. <laughs> my friend, my friend, we Destiny, let's have a let's have a, a talk after this, okay? Let's just have a <laughs> let's have a nice talk. I, I swear I'll answer you directly. Uh we have a donation from Orthodog for five dollars to Destiny. Are you willing to have a debate or discussion with Jay Dyer about the subject of the Great Reset? Wait, fuck. Was that addressed to me? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll talk to literally any other person besides this guy about the Great Reset. Sure. <laughs> because right. the conversation is guaranteed to, host to that go better. Crucible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, and then. Uh, we have our next one to Tristan from Good Grief, who donated five dollars. We very much appreciate that, sir. Tristan, is this God in the room with you right now? Yeah, we believe that God is everywhere, filling all things. Right. So in the in the creed, we affirm that uh, that God actually upholds everything. I mean, do you do you believe that science is in the room with you right now? He's asking you, Pedro. Or the super chat. Oh, oh, me. The me? super chatter. No, no, the super chatter. The super chatter. Do okay. you believe? I'll tag me in, yeah. sir, at any moment. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> let's. Uh, we're, we're gonna. I think we need to. If Destiny wants to, we can have a, a post discussion about this. But uh, I'll put up the next one. It comes from Peacecraft, who donated Wait, three dollars. Can I ask one question real quick about that? On in terms Go of the course, sir. Yeah. You, Tristan, do you believe that God knows all yeah. things? Yeah, absolutely. God is omniscient. Does God know what it feels like to take a dick in the ass? I mean, just again, proving how, how demonic and I'm just curious because you said God has knowledge of all things, right? Does, does this, I mean, again, complete disgust, complete disgusting blasphemy coming. And it's not surprising, you know? And that these are the types of things you would think about and speak. And it's just sad. 
I mean, it's just, it's just absolutely sad. Um, but no, God, God was incarnate, and God was not a homosexual or a coomer, uh, and God was without sin. So no, did not engage in sodomy. When God became incarnate and became man for us men and for our salvation, right? he, he did not uh, engage in sodomy, degeneracy, and any of that. Uh, but he is omniscient, so he knows what it's like. He doesn't have to engage in it. He doesn't need the experience to reveal the knowledge. He should know. Yeah, he's get, he's giving it to you, Tristan. Yeah. Just be just. You gotta find the delineation point. It's oh. no. I mean, there's no there's no there's no answer to that. He just well, he's the answer is it. yes. God is omniscient. Therefore, he knows what it it's like to take good. a big juicy cock right up the ass. Absolutely. Well, it sure uh, sounds like it sure sounds like you do, doesn't it? I mean, you, the, the the fact that you think well, about these things and you think about them so much that you actually mm-hmm. speak of them. Right, so I you're mean, the one that said that God was that. omniscient. I, that's just that's very interesting to me, you know. All right, so let's moving on. Peacecraft donated three dollars. We very much appreciate that, sir. I'm very curious to know what Tristan's thoughts on the protocol of the elders of Zion. Also, if he's worried about microchips, I wonder how did the lie, how did he, how he lives life without a cell phone. Okay, no, nobody said that microchips are inherently bad and that you can't live life without a cell phone. Um, yeah, I don't have any thoughts on the protocols of the elders of Zion. Um, yeah, uh, Destin, you got some really, some really highbrow and highly intelligent fans there, dude. Yeah. Uh, I, I love it. You got, you got, you well, got a okay. nice... Can I elucidate, Destin, can Destin, I elucidate really for that quick, question? Can, can I interact can, with you for yeah, a well, second? Just one uh, quick, because no, I, I, I can, I can elucidate on that it, question. Pedro, let him go. Yeah, All I'm right. just curious, so to make the question more clear, okay? So uh, it was about microchips, right? For, for being in cell phones and shit. So my question is, does God also know what it's like to fuck somebody in the ass? Because he would know both parts of it, right? If he's omniscient. <laughs> yeah, De- Destiny. I, I, yeah, I have I mean, to, it, I have it, it to ask, you man. What actually runs this guy? What actually runs this guy's life? What actually runs this guy's mind? Right? I mean, it's just this is so sad. Like, what what a sick in soul you have to have to speak these things and to think these things. I mean. Uh, th- thank God you probably don't have children. Um, and, and, you know, I mean, it, it is what it is, man. I mean, this is sad. Like, the fact that you would say that, um, you know, it is what it is, man. I'm I ain't sorry, mad, though. I you know, maybe God ashamed. have mercy I'm sorry. on us all. I shouldn't have. I God have mercy on us all for even sitting here and listening <clears throat> to, this, to this insanity. Right. And of course, you know, you, you've shown yourself to be completely disingenuous, mm-hmm. to be unable to actually have an actual debate or conversation throughout this whole this whole chat so um what a great way to finish it what what a winner man what a winner okay I'm truly, s- I, truly I am sorry it was it was a degenerate question I was possessed st- by a st- demon st- my bad okay what else? What's uh, the next question? uh we got another five bucks from our friend salakin sorry we missed it the first time but uh he wanted to say sorry i didn't get my second question answered to tristan how old is the earth how old do you think the earth is tristan uh, it doesn't matter what I think. What matters is what is true. We believe that the earth is created. I'm not sure the uh, the exact age of the earth. How many, you want that in days or hours? Just, I, think, I think in like according thousands of science, years would be good. According like, to science, how old is the earth and how do we know that? Damn, he's just dodging all the questions, man. You want me to tell you how old the earth is? You want me to tell you how God created the earth? Well, the question you, was how old the Earth was, so I imagine that's probably what they wanted. How old is the Earth, Destiny? I don't know how old the Earth is. I answered the question. How well, old my is understanding the is the Earth is around like four and a half billion years old. How do you know that? Uh, there's a whole bunch of like uh, I think like radio isometric techniques that they use to study like carbon decay and shit to try to make estimates on. And then there's a, how do you know that carbon dating is accurate? I don't know any of the Bible is accurate. Do you speak Hebrew? How do you know that carbon? Yeah, I didn't is think accurate? so. So all right, what's next? All righty, so we have a... Can't answer the question. Again, again, can't answer the question. You can't even read scripture in its original writing. So how do you, you're relying on man who is faulty by definition, right? To, to translate base, these things. We don't base our interpretation on, uh, we're, I'm Orthodox coming from the Orthodox perspective. Yeah. So we don't believe in sola scriptura. But again, like... Do you, do you have a book, do you have a holy book that you read? We don't believe in sola scriptura. I, I don't know what that means. You know, I'm not orthodox. Nope, is? I don't. I'm not orthodox. Yes, I, Destiny, I believe it's Solus Scriptura. No, Pedro. No, hold on, Pedro. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Tristan is, uh, <laughs> the boat's filling up with him. Don't help him, uh, uh, right. empty the water. Yeah. No, we, we don't believe in the mm-hmm. doctrine of Solus Scriptura, which is the Protestant assumption that man, mm-hmm. uh, gets to read the Bible and interpret the Bible. Man becomes this infallible interpreter of the Holy Scriptures. Mm-hmm. We believe that that's inherently fallible, uh, that man is not an infallible interpreter of Scripture. 
and we don't actually hold to sola scriptura, although we do believe the scriptures. Uh, the, the Orthodox Church is the church that gave us the scriptures, and those scriptures are a part of holy tradition. How do you know they weren't mistranslated? Uh, because of holy tradition. Man, that's a pretty powerful answer. And we have manuscripts going all the way back uh -huh. uh, to the early church. Well, you don't, because you can't read those, so you don't know about that. No, we do. I mean, I'm a member of the body of Christ. Yeah, but you, don't, you can't read any of that scripture, so you have no fucking idea, right? No, I, I can read that. You, literally, those scriptures could talk about Jesus Christ deep-throating and getting spit-roasted all day long, and you'd have no idea. You can't read that language, yeah, I mean, yeah, right? This is just the most... Yeah, the you most, can't. You have no idea. Low -tier, the most low-tier Wait, in spite for those scriptures, are any of those scriptures older Again, than you, like 6,000 years? Wait, wait, wait. If I, just, if I just interrupt you and speak really fastly uh, and then say blasphemous, disgusting um, Excuse me, sir. You're engaged in an ad hominem straw man fallacy right now. All right, uh, excuse all right, me. gentlemen. Gentlemen, moving forward, we have uh, Salakin with another... Oh, wait, no, 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 sorry. It's uh, Good Grief with $5. Thank you, sir, for that donation. We appreciate it. Tristan, do you prefer frogs or dinosaurs if you had to choose? I like frogs. I can touch them. I can hold them in my hand. I can pick them up. I like frogs. You can eat a frog. You can eat a dinosaur. All right. Okay. So, Destiny, do you want to interact with that? Um... I'm good with that one. Good to go. Wait, can you answer this? Does not does God know what it's like to touch a frog? Just to touch him, not like inappropriately. Moving forward. <laughs> okay, we have. Did we live at the same time as humans? And that was a donation for from dinosaurs <laughs> for five dollars. <laughs> so you can see why I read it that you're way. Gonna, you're we, gonna have to tell me that. Dinosaurs, we appreciate your five dollar donation. We Answer very much appreciate that. For us. We we're, we want to know: Did dinosaurs live with humans? Answer it, dinosaurs. Okay, moving along. Let me just post it. All right, like spicy longest, question. Yeah. Uh, so if it's against TOS, don't bother. To both Destiny and Tristan, though more to later, did around six million? Oh, uh, no. crud! No, uh, off. Yep, off. Not dealing with that shit. Ah, uh, gosh, why, guys? Why, why? We disavow any kind of uh, Jewish hate on this channel. We are not on that on that uh, energy level. Um. Yeah, but yeah, but but hatred of God and blasphemy—that's okay here, I guess. But when Destiny's gonna say disgusting, blasphemous things, no, no pushback. That's fine. No, that's not the case, and it's, yeah. it doesn't reflect what our personal opinions are of that. But we have to try to be neutral moderators, and as tough as that can be sometimes to hear, you'll you go you'll play back this video and see me cringing every single time that happens. <laughs> I hope so. That was, I mean, those were those are some but, but we we those try to be neutral. Big. We try to be neutral in our application of how this goes. There yeah, are don't some things, the Jews there, there are don't. there are some things that you were wrong about. There are some things he was wrong about. There's no two ways about that. But no, well, there's nothing I was wrong about, and I clearly won the debate. So. I'm not talking about who won or lost. What I'm talking about specifically is that there well we can get into it another time but what i'm saying is is that no we don't condone blasphemy at all but we're neutral arbiters we have to allow people to speak their mind okay so from synth for one dollar uh thank you for your donations sir to the channel can tristan quickly define ad hominem for us feel free to press Control w and look it up on wikipedia ad hominem is when an insult is used as an argument so if i were to say something like my uh let's do a physique check and take off your shirt destiny uh your physique is inferior to mine therefore your argument is moot or destiny you're a stupid fat therefore come on within tos man. that is not oh, okay damn we got to keep it within tos now, I, thought, I, mean, I didn't know that that was not. To be, that was, to be yeah. fair, to be fair, I understand why you did that because you know you literally. I'm not saying that that's inherently the case. I'm just like if if someone were to say like Destiny's a degenerate. Oh, so okay, I like, I love you guys. Yeah. It's been fun. I gotta <laughs> I gotta yeah, dip it's, on it's, out. It's, all right, that, rip on. That, I, I have to. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I can't risk. Uh, yeah, I can't risk that shit. Oh, he's, he's gone. gone. Well, he had to. He there's too many. Of violations course, he has to, dude. <laughs> too many violations of TOS. This. This guy is actually, I think he was actually crazy. 
I don't I don't know how to talk to people that are like um um I, I don't know how to talk to people that are like that. I don't know how to talk to people that are like that. I just don't know. Um holy shit. <clears throat> you only said it because you lost 20 times. Yeah, may there might be like um I don't know actually. I try I tried really hard. Like it because I because I saw what was happening like pretty quickly. I, I think I realized well, I almost realized I was opening speech, but after I started going back and forth for like five or ten minutes, I started to realize, okay, this is like we're never gonna connect. So maybe um maybe there's a way to reset. So I tried to be friendly. I tried to do um I tried to say like, hey, we're not having a productive conversation. Um, but it didn't seem like there was anything I could do to actually have a conversation. I feel like I tried. I, like I'm just, I, I tried to, I gave like a macro explanation of like, this is what I'm doing. This is how the conversation, I'm trying to figure out like, blah, blah, blah. Like that's literally all I was trying to do. Um, I, but it seemed like there was no way. And then he kept accusing me of all the things you do. You're just steamrolling, you're rambling. The fact that I asked him like, Hey, do you think that, um, do you believe that, um, uh, wait, fuck, my brain just got zapped because I just saw my phone. Um, oh, I asked him, do you think that we've spoken for about, is it spoke or spoken? Is spoken a word? Have we spoke for the same amount of time? Have spoke. I think it's spoke, right? Have we spoke for the same amount of time? Um, and he was like, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. And he had like no idea. Um, I, yeah, I don't know, like Jesus, holy shit. If he seriously couldn't tell, if somebody engages in like a TOS or like hateful manner, I think your obligation Fucking as a streamer is you're supposed to like get rid of that content in a responsible manner. So we don't approve of it. And then I leave the call because if he does it a second time, then I can get in trouble. But like if somebody does something that is like hateful or would be a violation of TOS, you're supposed to make an effort to remove the content from your stream. Like if you're in a game or whatever, then you just leave, right? I think like, yeah, so we left, it's whatever. I'm not gonna sit around and see if he does it like a second or third time. Thank you, Steven. <laughs> What is your answer to the, you can't make claims about if there is or isn't morals if you believe there is no objective truth? You you can, it's just, it's a more, it's like a complicated, like you have to get into like moral anti-realism and then like you've got to talk about like either this like fucking like moral error theory or non-cognitivism and how can we like say that moral statements can't like have any factual, like you can't make a fact claim about whether it's true or false. It's, it's, a, it's a whole complicated bullshit conversation. I don't want to have it. You can, it can be fun to explore and jerk off about these ideas, but like you can totally skip meta ethics because here's the reality, okay? And if there are any philosophers in chat that are about to get ass mad, okay, get ass mad. Here's the reality, okay? Most people agree with like 98% of like, like all of meta ethics can be boiled down to like in general, like reduce human suffering, ensure human flourishing, okay? We can all roughly think that each other's gonna agree with that, and then we can have conversations on like the normative level or the applied level, right? Now, there are going to be some rare things that might go back all the way to that, so things like abortion really test the limits of that. But when it comes to like, should we have universal healthcare? You know, should we take in refugees? Should, like, on these things, these are all gonna come down to factual grounds of like, do they help us or do they hurt us? And we're all gonna generally agree on what helps and hurt us. So, no, I don't. Meta ethics is just a cancerous route to go down to have arguments there because you don't really You're need to. Genius, for the dude. Like you, you have no idea. Like the real life example of this is you've argued with thousands of people over what's right and wrong, and you've never had like you've never gone all the way back to meta ethics to do it, right? When you're on Reddit and somebody's like, "Oh, I think minimum wage is good," and you're like, "Good? <laughs> you think minimum wage is good? Can you even define to me what is the goodness? Okay, good luck. Hope you know German. Okay, otherwise, fuck. Like you, come on, dude. It's fuck off.